And in that case, I'd like to call the Concord School Committee meeting to order. I'll note that we are being recorded and broadcast. Welcome and thanks to those of you who are here. Um, we're starting off with Concord tonight uh, for a little bit and then our Carlisle brethren will join us in a little while for the joint part of the meeting as of seven. Um, so we're starting off tonight. We have one public comment here. We'd love to start with that. Linda, come on up if you want to come up to the end. Oh, whoops. Is one of those on, Jared? Can you uh, we'll make it on. And Linda, when you start, if you could just state your name and address, that'd be great. I wrote it down this time because I know I always forget. <laughs> right. Uh, Linda Neiman, 59 Mallard Drive, North Top Front. Um, I wanted to speak on two issues, the electric buses and uh, the parking lot. Um, there was a good amount of people that wrote in a few weeks ago about the electric buses. I'm sorry I couldn't talk last time because I had a really bad head cold and I just was like, coughing nonstop. It was like chain eating three months. The whole thing. Anyway, um, so there's a lot of people who wrote in uh, asking for a transition of our diesel fleet to clean electric buses buses and I really appreciate that the school committee along with Dr. Hunter has reached out to mothers out front um, and we're really eager to help with this issue in any way we can. You know it's a very difficult and complicated issue um, and we're really looking forward to seeing the new buses come online which we just heard about. Um, and then very quickly about the parking lot debate, uh, just observing uh, the passionate debate uh, on the committee about this issue. And it may seem like a contentious issue for you guys. You guys have gone very late. I really appreciate it. But to an outside observer, it shows a very thoughtful, deliberative process. And I just want to know that we really appreciate it, um, that you're considering the ways that we need to integrate um, these issues with our larger sustainability values. Um, unfortunately, in this time and place in history, we really have to consider everything we do in the context of climate change and sustainability with all the news of Australia burning and um, you know the floods and fires, it's just very upsetting. And everything we do, it has to be viewed in light of that. Um, and then as far as the parking lot issue, we really want to know how we can help. And we've reached out to uh, Dr. Hunter, and we're trying to do what we can to help with this issue with surveys to the uh, parents and hopefully to the students on what are the barriers to riding a bus and um, just any way we can help. I also wanted to just state that we don't want to be adversarial in any way. We know that sustainability makes your job harder, but we want to help uh, in any way we can. Um, again, sustainability, is, I've heard several times it's education versus sustainability, and it really kind of makes me sad to hear that. Um, it doesn't really have to be. It's just one of those things that you have to consider early and often. It might require a little extra work up front, or a lot of work up front. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you in particular for your offer to help. And it, it, it's great to have those collaborative relationships with groups in town. So we'll take you up on it. Yes, I know you will. And I'm, I'm sorry, I have to leave early. No problem. We'll share your comments with the Carlisle folks as well as it relates yeah, to the you. joint. We'll probably still be here when you're done if you want to come back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, she certainly will. <laughs> yeah. She's been here and watched us. <laughs> um, Okay, moving on to old business then. Um, we'll start with a middle school update. Um, once again, things are moving along well with our building committee. Um, so we had a meeting last week and went through basically kind of what's gonna happen over the next few months. Um, and I'll update at a high level that for the next, the next couple months are very exciting. The design team is really starting to um, get to work, use the information that we're already collecting and we'll be bringing us a series of things to look at and start to narrow down options at our next meeting even. Um, so they've been, at this point, still collecting information. Um, we talked about the forum, we had a great forum. They, they and Dr. Hunter and the team have also spent, is it three days now with staff? Two full days. Two full days and a, and a half day. And yep. A half day on either side. Yeah. The last part is to come okay. Thursday. Yep. Um, with staff, all staff at the middle school, collecting a lot of great input, um, excitement, addressing concerns, that kind of stuff too, but really mostly collecting input. Um, they've been doing site and actual ground research over at the site already. And at our next building committee meeting, they are planning to come to us 
with some test site options, which is basically options for siting of the building, mm -hmm. placement of the building on the Sanborn site, on the grounds. You know, is it over in the corner of the field? Is it on the edge of the hill? That kind of thing. Um, so that's really exciting. And our next meeting, we'll start to look at something that detailed. And at the following meeting in March, um, by that point, we'll have had a lot of feedback on what should go into the building. Mm -hmm. And they'll start to bring us some, some options in terms of design concepts. So we won't be looking at you know full building designs yet, but it will be design concepts in terms of what you know is it a full size gym and how big is the auditorium and what kinds of things are important to us, um, and then we start talking cost trade offs and all that. Is that a good? Would you add yeah, to that? Yeah, I can fill in a little more on just on the educational visioning work. We had two very packed days of just. I, it was funny, one of the designers said, it sort of feels like speed dating. It was kind of, you know, just this rotating group of teachers constantly all day long, literally from 7.30 in the morning till 4.30 or so at night. So, yeah. um, but each group really came in and had done some thoughtful discussions prior to coming, which I think was really valuable. Um, departments came in with a vision for teaching and learning that I was really loving hearing and um, all those great seeds, boy, as we capture those of the innovation and wish lists of what they could be doing if they had a different space was really exciting. Um, we got into some really practical pieces in terms of what they might have for space and what, what they have now versus what they might have. Um, it was really, really valuable. I know the designers felt like they got a lot of information that was going to inform their design. Um, as they start to really go back and talk about that. So that's what they're actively doing. We're meeting as a, just a leadership team, professionals primarily on Thursday to debrief and talk on themes. And that'll be some of the more of the information we can share out as they've aggregated all that really raw data from last week. So um, it, was, it was really exciting. It, I think the middle school staff left feeling very much like we did. It feels really real having had all those discussions and talking about what we'd like to see coming going down there. Everyone was reminded cost will be a discussion point too, because um, I think if you told it all of their wish lists up and the sustainable lever, they're going to put it all together and probably have a building we can't quite afford. <laughs> so we're uh, trying to be sure that the architects are designing within the scope of our initial targets. And then we'll look at what the trade offs are and how we get there. So. Things are really picking up pace is the way it feels um, to get to some of these benchmarks that we've set to, to have decisions to make. Yeah. That's great. It is. It's great. Yeah. Um, and I guess on the note of timing, too, one of the other things we were talking about at the last building committee meeting um, was the timing of a special town meeting when we'll come back to ask. We don't have that set yet. It's still looking like sometime early fall, um, but a few of us are going to gather soon and, and Put some details around that and work with the town to figure out the best time for it. Stephen Crane tomorrow, okay. uh, a car in the town clerk's office. Yep. Ultimately, being a presidential election year, the September 1st is the primary and the November 3rd is the election. So those are really target anchor dates to work with, um, which in a way is complicated and in a way easier. So I think we're going to navigate that and probably come to some recommendations for certainly for the next building committee meeting. In terms of that. Other things we're honing in on, enrollment numbers, weighing, weighing how we get to that, because enrol enrollment in the elementary schools are, is down a bit, so we could pull back off of that initial 750 number, but we also have to factor in the new housing starts, and especially West Concord and yes. the private school enrollment. So I've kind of put all that raw data out to the entire leadership team. We're going to bring it to the building committee next month and try to really solidify enrollments. Um, so we're getting some big decisions made over the next short term that's really going to drive the design of the building. So, yeah. I think I asked this again, but what's the potential if our own, you know, Thoreau with this new development could easily fill up and then spill over to, you know, where our levers are getting less and less? In terms of the elementary school? Yes. Oh, I, I'm not worried yet knowing okay. what we're doing now to rebalance and um, the fact that Thoreau is comfortably sitting between Willard and, and Alcott right now. I think we're okay. We need to get a better sense of uh, 
what I do, well, let me qualify that. I, what I know of Housing Starts is very rarely do all the kids land at the elementary school. Often the new, the folks moving into communities have older kids as well. So I, mm -hmm. no. yeah. short of my magic crystal ball, um, <laughs> I think we're okay at the moment. And we're so that one's gonna, a big one? And yeah, and then we'll build the middle school that's easily we need to be able to absorb. You would never want to bust those kids to another school. Yeah, no. <laughs> and and that's a true neighborhood school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, and I just had it. So, how are you compiling the feedback from the forum? Because there seemed like to me there mm -hmm. were some very new mm -hmm. things that you all probably had. Yeah. Done. So actually, um, Pat Nelson and I have been compiling the feedback, and I'm going to give credit <laughs> well, also with help from Linda Neiman, who took great notes and sent us her notes as well. And we've been so incorporating from various people's notes. Pat took film, detail, so you can just watch them. and there's film. <laughs> so. um, but just the process of summarizing. Um, we are aggregating a lot of that and are going to bring it back to the group and as a summary of themes and then that can that can go up we will figure out what we do and we'll probably post that somehow publicly so everybody can see it so we will definitely come back with here's what we heard mm -hmm. um and we will also discuss it at the next public forum which is february 27th so on the 27th there'll be a, a follow-up public forum and the goal there is to say, okay, here, here's the feedback that we've heard. Here are the themes that we understand as desires and needs. Um, here are the things that we're looking to accomplish. And we can kind of at that point talk about the information that we have so far and get further feedback on it. I, I just, um, I don't want to deliberate. It's, your, it's a separate committee, but I know a couple of groups, CPAC for example, mm -hmm. asked to be involved in, you know, when it kick that can too far down the road as you're making your design decision. Yep. So I don't know. So we actually no, fact, agreed with you that that sounded pretty urgent. So mm -hmm. I reached out to CPAC the following day. And by the end of last week, we've set um, Thursday the 30th at 1.30 for a Good. open CPAC meeting and okay. uh, SMMA will be there okay. to take that input directly. Um, I also reached out to Jean uh, Gold, thank you. I think I got it. At the Commission for Disabilities and invited her to attend as well. Excellent. So thank you. We heard that urgency and responded. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. Okay. Um, Court, anything else that I. No, no, I think, you, I think you've covered it. Um, I would urge that people go to the school website, yeah. and one link away is the building project, um, and uh, people are trying to be diligent about getting information on that website as promptly as possible. For example, that uh, uh, meeting that you referred to is, is up. Yep, the uh, links already. to all of our meetings are up there. The, the next regular meeting of the full building uh, committee is February 13th, mm. and that's a 7.30 a.m. here, mm -hmm. and uh, check the website for subcommittee meetings because right. they're, they're uh, underway. And the only other thing I would uh, say is that uh, w we have an unusual situation in that we're trying to move with all deliberate speed, meaning quickly, but we're being deliberate about it, which means, uh, understandably, because of the magnitude of the project, people are very eager for answers. And we don't have all the answers because right. we have this mechanism to produce the questions, produce the answers, include a lot of people. So. Um, as uh, onerous as it is, we're going to ask uh, people to get involved but understand there is a large process that exactly. you and I and everybody else has to plug into. And we, we appeal to people to plug into that process um, so, that every, so that everybody can be heard. Yes, absolutely. Echo the encouragement to, to check out the website and to come to things. I would actually also share it, and I, I'll have to, I'll share it with the whole building committee as well, but um, just at a meeting with a group of the League of Women Voters the other day, they gave us some feedback and shared some really nice feedback actually, saying it felt like so far this building committee was really doing a great job of collaborating and that the process felt very transparent to the extent that some people who were concerned about it moving too fast even felt better now because the process has been very clear and collaborative. So that was nice feedback to hear and to us it means good, we're off to a good start and we continue to push hard on that front. And people can join the process at any point. At any you know, time, You can yep. have missed a, a meeting or 10 meetings and still pick pick up where you wish and, Absolutely. Uh, and uh, start to join us. Yeah, and I'll just give the League a plug. We are at their first Friday, yes, February yes. 7th. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, mm. at the library. <laughs> no, that's across the street at another. Oh, it's across correct. the street. Yeah, I can't correct you about that. But the West Concord Church. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will be there. Mike Carroll, um, part of Hills OPM leadership team, and Matt Root and Kate Hanley of the Sustainability Subcommittee. They're all three there as a panel, and looking forward to sharing an interactive dialogue with the community. Yeah. They, they host good events, so that should be a good one, mm -hmm. February 7th. Um, let's see, I think that's about it on the middle school, unless there are any other questions? All right. How do, yes, how do people oh. communicate with the building committee? Rather than waiting for a meeting, what if they've got something to if share? If you have right something now? to share, there is a link on the building committee page to contact the building committee. Anyone can do that at any time. Um, and there's also an email address to email directly, which is uh, uh oh, C uh, CMSBC CM at, at concordps.org. But <laughs> go to the page, and there's a link. Go to the page. <laughs> yeah. okay, thank you. Go to the, the project building project page on the district site. Yeah. yeah thanks for pointing that out. Um, then <laughs> I guess we're on to Varied's report. So in your packets, <clears throat> you see both the variance report by 1,000 function as well as the 100 function. Um, one has about 50 lines, the other one has nine lines. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we are currently in budget. This is the time of year, though, that we start looking at all of our open POs. We start working with special ed to make sure we're caught up on all of our tuitions and making sure uh, the encumbrances are starting to go down. Um, so it's it's good to see right now that we are we are in budget. You do have a negative right now in the programs with other with other districts, which is all of our tuition lines. Mm -hmm. We're still working those out. Um, that will go down. We'll have some offsets um, it, by the April first meeting when I provide the last uh, the third quarter's worth of well, our third quarter worth of variance reports. Uh, that will most likely uh, be at least have a cent in it. Uh, but we're just watching it right now. But as you can see, everything else is okay. in budget. Uh, if you do go to the 1,000, uh, the 100 function, there are some that are in the negatives, but there will be offsets. Uh, for example, the 2305 is all, mm -hmm. all of our classroom teachers. You see a negative there, but there's a positive in the 2325, which is su the substitutes account. So we need to make some transfers to cover those. Mm -hmm. um, and other little ones, uh, the Right under that, the 2320 uh, therapeutic services, that's in the negative. That's our contracted services for special ed. That's also something that um, we may see the encumbrances go down. We are watching those. We have identified uh, things to potentially transfer in there. Um, and then last but not least, this report includes all of our pre-encumbrances. So it includes all of our pre-encumbrances which means things that are in this report to give you a true, um, a true value of where we're at are things that, uh, that are encumbered that really hasn't even got to Laurie and I yet. So we could deny these purchases and they would go off. But we want to show the, what our true cost of mm -hmm. what is in the system right now. Um, we're in pretty good shape. We're watching it. So, so a pre-encumbrance could be uh, effectively a request. Correct. Yes. They might be sitting at the principals mm -hmm. he, and he or she is sitting on that just waiting and it hasn't gotten to us yet but mm -hmm. it's showing up on this report. Okay. And those will go away. Usually I don't like pre encumbrances open for more than 60 days. Mm -hmm. So usually I'll, I'll run a report every month or two and I'll just say hey this has been open since August. What are you going to do with it? And they'll either close it or they'll push it forward. Love it keeping things on track. <laughs> so, if I might, Jared, who among us, you, Lori, uh, fellow members of the committee, have had time to uh, do more than look at the numbers and actually look uh, in a in an analytical way? Any any patterns here? Any concerns? No. Any? Mid-year is always the toughest mm -hmm. because there's a mm -hmm. lot where yeah. it's over-exaggerated. Sure, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. So, I, uh, I promise you, though, that me, Ian, and Nikki, uh, are going through this. Uh, Nikki has really started to grasp um, grasp it this year. So she sees everything before it comes to me, make sure it's, it, they have uh, money in the account, uh, that it's in the right account, and that the PO and the bill um, match 
to feel. So. So they watch it in that really granular level. I, I'm approving POs, which sometimes they wish I was at the front end of the approval and not the <laughs> tail end, because if I deny it, that's a lot of people I haven't even um, already did some work. So we're always watching balances and making sure certainly the bottom line stays black, but when you know transfers and things like that are always being suggested. Jared, I don't see a PO that comes to me in the red. They they give they work that through before it gets to me. Even if the line might not have had enough money, they've initially suggested a transfer already. Okay. So. Could you help me a little bit more with the nine thousand? Sure. Was the adjustment overly optimistic? That would be a casual interpretation. But what's it really mean? Um, it means I still have other offsets to do, and I'm working with the special ed department to make sure that the number of the encumbrance is the actual amount before I, I go ahead and transfer another 200000 in there. Um, you see that I did transfer out the 563 or... Um, 596? Mm -hmm. uh, 596 at the beginning of the year, uh, optimistically, and then the things have changed. So I need to uh, identify some costs to put back in. But okay. circuit breaker, 240 grant, money is still coming in that we can offset it with. Also, I have not offset the, um, the preschool grant, which will offset preschool teachers that will, um, so the preschool um, tuition uh, will offset preschool teachers' salaries that would then open up to potentially offset, say, preschool contract services, et cetera. Because you remember, may remember this is our first year of having access to that revolving account. Um, so he hasn't accounted for that additional funding stream. And that so was 100, was it? 140. 140, 140. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And then there'll be some utility offsets that we always, um, you know, in the springtime, take a look at food service. So. Good, thank you. Other questions from the committee? Oh, I'll just put Thank up you. there at a high level, Jared. Um, uh, I don't want this to sound dumb. Obviously, as you move things, mm -hmm. that means that they weren't exactly planned as such. But are there any here that are big surprises? No. Things that are out of the and, and, and the thing is, is because we still have accounts that, in a way, mean the same thing. We have duplicates. They could be charging something that might be a supply to one supply line when it perfectly could have been to another supply line okay and just trying to keep up with so it. some of it is still that no no big surprises no, in this. no. great no terrific other questions then we are good um so the next thing on our agenda is to vote on the contract for the bus financing however um since jared is going to be pr talking to us all the entire regional, uh, sorry, the joint committees, the regional committee also, uh, in just a few minutes about transportation. And that could end up answering some questions that could come up in this vote. And there's a similar vote for the region. Mm -hmm. I would suggest and take a motion as such, if anybody is interested, that we move that item to later in the agenda with the regional action items. So Second. Any? No. No. For, <laughs> just for Concord. <laughs> Uh, any discussion on that? Then all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Got it. Opposed? All right, so we will move that item to the action items um, in the joint agenda. Uh, and that means, since we are six minutes early for opening the regional meeting, we're going to take a six minute break and we'll be back shortly. See? <laughs> hey, are my meetings efficient or what? Six minutes <laughs> break. Okay, quick break. <laughs> we can't officially start before our posted time. No, and you don't have Carlisle. And we don't have Carlisle in the number. That, come on, Lori. That's oh, no. Dr. Hunter really. Yeah, nice. Picky, picky. Point. Form, form is not the name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. Mm. It says you want me here at 15. Start with that. Mm. It's at 715, so is that what's coming? Is that a oh nice? Oh good. Bye, everyone. Yay. Yay. 
David is apparently running late, so without either of you, we couldn't have started at 7. We will start on time, and you can join us. I'm excited for our recognition yeah, tonight. There you go. I don't know if name dropping my name will do you any good, you call it. Well, You're welcome to try. It's the best I can do. <laughs> I hey. use, use what you got, even if it's precise. only me. <laughs> name dropping is good to a certain level. Depends you on never know. On the leverage of the name. Imagine that if I needed something in the superintendent, so they have it on the Yeah. There's right. a leverage there. No. I don't know what's there. Not sure that'll work, but... Sven's <laughs> <laughs> not in town much. Like, I don't know. I hope. Yeah. Oh my god. It's so beautiful. Sorry. 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 Seven. Yes. Oh, that's okay. All right. Welcome back. It's seven o'clock, so we can officially begin the joint part of the meeting. Um, I'll bring the uh, Carter Carlisle Original School Committee meeting to order. Uh, please note that we're being recorded. Uh, we're already in session for Carter. Yes, and we have one member yet to show up, but yeah. said we should start. Yes. But so uh, no public comments. We did have one. Uh, beginning of the Concord meeting that somewhat related to the high school um, from Mothers Out Front, but buses, electric buses and parking lot, um, and thanking us for the 
outreach and the work we're doing with them. And we thank them right back. Mm -hmm. um, so no further public comment. Um, can we hear from the beat at the high school? <laughs> yes, I wasn't able to find out the sports records because it's a long weekend, people are away. But I guess the big thing right now is just right in the middle of exams. So. Yeah. Yeah. Most people are talking about it. It's stress from that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the talk of the town. Huh? <laughs> and then in our last Senate meeting, we kind of just discussed, we saw that if, if there's a new calendar proposed, so we've kind of discussed parts of that a bit. But mm -hmm. I don't think, I, I think the only thing is some people were concerned about the half day on the 23rd, but nothing really big about that. The half day on the 23rd of what? December. Of December. Oh, What's the oh, concern? Right. I think some people are worried about, like, I think it's some. Uh, whether it's worth it to come all the school that day, mm -hmm. that day, or whether it's worth it to count as a day of school and like some classes might really mixed up. Yeah. Kind of catch up and stuff like that. Yeah. I, think, I think that was not much to say about that. Good. Okay. Today's the day at the end of the year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> People are also thinking that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, recognitions. So our director of special services just stepped out to bring in our guests. Um, we're really excited with the 18 to 22 year old program that we started this year here at Ripley. So they're housed around the corner when they're on site, which they're out and about in the community and such quite a bit. So I am going to turn it over to who's... Okay, come on up. So we're fortunate enough to have uh, it looks like three members of the staff and two students with us. I'll let them introduce themselves and hear hear what they've been up to. Great, great. Yeah, yeah you want to yeah. come over here? That's fine. If you need the screen, Where? stand over that way and look this way, I think, and then the camera can get you too. Uh -huh. So you're all on TV, just so you know. We know. Yes? <laughs> no, you're not. I'm very excited. No, we <laughs> well, we can start with introductions. Sure. So, you want to start with introductions? Sure. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hi, name is Ben. Uh, I'm a student in the March program I graduated from the high school in 2019. And I'm Heather Small, I'm your classroom teacher within the launch program. My name is Claire and I'm in the launch program. I graduated from CCHS in 2019. I'm Heather Lomitier and I'm a behavior specialist in the launch program. I'm Heather Mahoney, I'm the transition specialist for CCHS, um, and I'm the launch program coordinator. We didn't actually require that they all be named Heather. We have the majority! <laughs> we win! <laughs> what is launch? A new program developed for students after finishing four years of high school. What is our plan in launch? Social activities, practicing new job skills, Learn how to do stuff on our own and transition program. I made this slide all by myself. <laughs> I still have. Wow. So, as Claire mentioned, um, there's a variety of components to the transition program for launch. There's self determination, social skill building, functional academics, independent living skills, pre vocational exploration career explanation, community integration, and cultural competency. So we cover a lot of different things. Um, and upon completion of four traditional years of high school, a student um, typically from Pathways will transition over, um, oftentimes entitled to staying until they're 22, that the qualifying factors for that are um, passing MCAS, uh, meeting their graduation requirements, and then following along with Jesse's requirements for free and appropriate education. So all of those are the components to um, being eligible and entitled for the um, transition program. 
So the launch program was developed to continue to support students in achieving their post-secondary visions through community-based learning, as that is kind of that natural progression for when you leave high school, much like a lot of the skills that we have, some individuals need a little extra attention on um, perfecting those areas. So one of the first components we're going to talk about is self-determination. And um, each person has individual choice. And so one of the things we start off with is doing an interest assessment and um, just preferences, learning what individuals want for their goals, what they're interested in doing, so we can design the program around each person. And um, so we make individualized goals. And, and also each person has their own individualized schedule. So some people may be doing they won't be out in the community while other people are learning back in the program. And um, it just gives them the exercise in their control of individualized services, which is um, an important part of the yep. program. Um, and then the advocacy, um, teaching them about all their um, resources that are available to them as they um, move into adult, closer to adult services. And um, teaching them about their human rights. And of course, with our current events, learning about political awareness and, and how they can um, continue to advocate for their rights. So social skills is another large component of what we work on. Um, we do have a speech language pathologist that does a um, social pragmatics group with us once a week. And then throughout everyday programming, we're continuously working on social skills development. Um, we also, in this particular photo, we um, partner with the transition program at Littleton High School to kind of build those social connections in hopes that um, peers will, you know, continue after they leave and make plans. Um, so that photo is us over at Littleton High School. Their transition program is in a room called the Bistro, um, and they're playing a game while they're planning on our next activity. So they all plan the activities together. Um, so it's interest-based on what they're looking to learn more about. So our next slide is about functional academics, which is what we focus on in the in the classroom. So learning all of those functional skills um, in order to be uh, those life skills, and then we'd like to share the things that he likes to learn in the classroom. I like what are they? Oh, I think that and writing poem notes. So those are some things that we work on regularly in our classroom: how to advocate for yourself and tell the people that you're going home to what you have done throughout the day. Um, some of the other things we work on are current events, like Heather mentioned, teaching them how to pull facts from important pieces of information, email writing, money, money management, measuring, um, all very academic things that are focused on life skills. So independent living skills, this is a very wide area that um, continues to be worked on every day. So exercise, nutrition, um, kitchen skills. Some students may do independent cooking. So for instance, I meet with Clara once a week. We do some cooking in the pathway so she can build those independent skills. Um, we also use the um, consumer science kitchen over in the middle school so the students have access to, you know, using different community resources while building their skills. Um, time management, decision making, problem solving really developing those skills so that um, when an individual turns 22 and leaves the program, they're as independent as possible. Um, how I mentioned what I was doing in these pictures, grilled cheese, doing Zumba, and finding clothes for the interview. So when we're doing different community-based activities, so. In one of the photos, Clara is doing a budgeting um, lesson where she's also shopping for an interview outfit, picking out what's appropriate, knowing clothing sizes. You know, you have a budget, how much can you spend? Do you have a pair of shoes at home that you can use? Or do you need that new pair of shoes for that interview? You never really know. Um, and then there she is doing some independent cooking. And then Ben and her over there doing some Zumba in the classroom. Which seems gone. to be a favorite. Yeah, <laughs> they um, Lifelong health and fitness, the ways that we like to stay active. The next slide is about our pre-vocational exploration, so getting uh, individuals in the program ready to transition into the community to do these um, vocational skills. We have established a pre-vocational lab where they follow a like vocational routine, they use a timesheet to sign in, um, they then choose a job from a choice board and complete that job independently. Um, 
with staff support. So the next slide is also um, just a student sorting envelopes by alphabet, our timesheet board, and a snippet of the choices that we have. It's really great to foster independence so they learn their routine, learn skills across different areas of vocation. So business and marketing, computer, computer technology, construction, industrial, and processing and production. And then they can transfer that to job sites where their strengths are. What launch students do for fun? Go on Friday to trip activities and go out into job sites. So as I mentioned, we do a lot of community integrated um, experiences, a lot of community-based learning, so working on recreational development, um, career exploration, individual employment. We have a few students that are competitively employed. Um, the students plan their activities together um, so that it really is interest-based and they're really in the planning process of it. So it's not just us planning and then telling them what to do. Um, but the primary focus is continuing to work on building their independent living skills and then their vocational skills. So as they're leaving, there's um, independent members of um, the communities. Yes. So next so this slide is a variety of collages of what we have done on Fridays. So one photo is we took the commuter rail into Fangwell Hall um, just before the, the Christmas holiday. Um, and as you can see, students had to take the commuter rail in, learn about how to behave on the commuter rail. Um, they, prior to that, had looked up the schedule for it. Um, and then we've also taken the commuter rail over to West Concord, we've gone to the movies, and then we've had a wonderful opportunity to plan a Friendsgiving um, with our friends from Littleton High um, that Miss Ruby was able to join us for. Um, so that was a really wonderful experience that the students enjoy. We learned in the commuter at Northern High School and Kale Hall. So some of um, the other career exploration activities are the community vocational sites. So we do have a few of those that students get to explore. Um, the Council on Aging, Buddy Dog, the Good Now Library, Drumlin Farm, Discovery Museum, and Cooperative Elder Services. Those have really been great partnerships where students have been able to develop their skills. Um, also educate community members about how capable they are at doing a variety of things. I mean, really bridging that gap between school and the community. So those have really been excellent opportunities. So you can see Claire is over at Buddy Dog, uh, where she is walking one of the so, uh, smallest dogs. Yeah, one of the small dogs. And then in the other photo, we have Alec, who's visiting with some of the chickens at Drumlin Farm. And in these photos, so at Discovery Museum, they offer a wide variety of different skills for students to develop. Oftentimes, we could be out raking leaves, doing landscaping, painting, as you can see. Um, George, uh, it's Tyler's doing some painting of the deck. George is preparing some arts and crafts activities for the students in their activity labs, because um, they go through a lot of different arts and crafts. So Discovery Museum has really been a wonderful community partner as well. In addition to our vocational opportunities in the community, we do have a few students that are independently and competitively employed. Um, one student has been at TJ Maxx for over two years where he is working independently uh, with a periodic check-in with his manager, um, but continues to be excelling. We have another student who is independently employed at, employed at Crosby's. Um, they have also been a fantastic, both of these businesses have been wonderful community partners. Um, the other student at Crosby's has been there for a little bit over a year um, and has really thrived there and is looking to, we're working with him on scheduling a meeting with his manager to try other opportunities within the business to kind of um, broaden his skill base. Um, and so to tie out everything that we're doing together, um, we see it through the lens of cultural competency. Um, we want to be um, responsive in a um, positive way. Um, so we have group and individual expectations, and they're posted in the room. These are pictures um, that are in the room. So everybody knows what the expectations of the room are, whether you're in the room or in the community. And, um, and some, individual, some people do have individual expectations in addition to this. Mm -hmm. um, and we just create a proactive and responsive environment 
um, knowing what people's interests are and what their needs are, um, we can be proactive and, and be needs-based um, and making sure everybody has what they need. And um, we focus on social emotional learning um, to make sure everybody um, can engage in coping skills and strategies and learning what works best for every, every person. And we use this, um, we tie it all in together with positive behavior supports. Um, if an individual does need an individual plan, we work as a team, and we build the plan with the, um, with the individual and the family. And, and just really take a person-centered approach to, make, to build a program around each individual um, person to make it what, what they need it to be. So um, to promote everyone's participation in this presentation, all of the individuals in the program were asked to kind of contribute in a way, even if they couldn't be here, by writing down what they like about the new program. And so this is one of the individuals in our program um, at the radio station. And then he also shared that he likes working at the Good Now Library and Drumlin Farm, as well as our working on our current events articles, which is a routine that we've established from the very beginning of this you know, inception of this program. Um, he also loves math, leisure time, and playing basketball in the gym here, which we can access. So um, he shared that. We also had some time in the radio station where the students were able to record their own holiday show that was aired, um, like recorded and aired during the holiday time, which was really cool. Um, next is what I like about lunch is volunteering at Buddy Dog, working at the school store, and cooking. Right. Next is fit. So, I'm going to share what you do. I like about lunch is poetry math, earn trading. And working at the now library. The library, yeah. Uh, the next individual is a picture of them working at one of their external vocational sites, and he shared with us that he likes working. Uh, the Vogue Lab, which is that um, pre vocational lab within our classroom where they learn that routine before going into the community, cooking, and um, going into the community. Um, another individual shared that they also like working in the book lab and working um, out at the book sites. And specific, he actually specifically named one of the jobs that we have in the book lab, which is document sorting. So I have to organize my mail into whether I've paid it, it needs to be paid, if I've dealt with it or not. So it's kind of practicing that skill. And he, he likes sorting. Just stuff. Somebody. And then I think that's I could something out of it. <laughs> <laughs> More fun. And then last, but definitely not least, is a slide. Do you want to talk about this last slide, the picture? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Where did we go on one of our first trips as a launch group? Oh. They went to the Friendly Toast. Yeah. And this is a place that Ben had a connection with when he was at his previous school, so that's why we we made that community oh, yeah. trait. Yeah. So that's our that's our program. Yep. Oh my gosh. Wow. 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 That's just wonderful. Would you Take any comments or questions from oh, sure. the committee members. It's so wonderful to hear about everything that you're doing. Um, do, you, do you guys have comments or questions? Well, it's very clear you work very hard, and uh, you can have some fun too while you're working. <laughs> yes. hard. Doesn't uh, feel like work. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you describe skills that all of us are working on. Yes. Really, they're they're so important for all of us. Yeah. So we're, we're very very proud of, of the work you do. Uh, qu question I have, you had and uh, other school leaders had a, a vision for what was possible and now now it's real, you, you've all made it real, the students and the teachers have made it real. Has that vision changed? Have you enlarged your, uh, your confidence in what's possible because of what you've achieved already? I mean, I actually think that I, 
I think that the sky is the limit when it comes to the potential that students have um, and the ability that we have to grow the program even more. Um, and then as that's happening, continue to develop additional connections within the community and really student center the program. Um, we've like, you know, this is the first year for the program. So we've really leaned, the students have been a significant part of developing it as well, um, which has really been wonderful. They've been part of um, creating the classroom and putting all those pieces and kind of having their legacy mm -hmm. so that, you know, they're the first members of the program. So as they continue on, um, we envision them being able to speak to students and pathways about their experience to get them excited about joining the program as well. Um, so kind of just like paying that piece forward so that um, the excitement continues to be there. Well, we're very grateful for Claire and Ben joining us and yes. joining you tonight. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to give a shout out to all of the adults. Literally, Ruth Groovy walked in here the second week in July, and I opened room one, which was not cleaned out yet. And said, so this is where the 18 to 22 program is going to be that you're going to open in time for the start of school. <laughs> and Ruth did what she does. She said, OK. And Heather was already at the high school, so we had kind of sat there. And then she did some amazing hiring processes, and we got the right people in the right place. And, Wow, did they take, you know, literally sand and make this enormous sandcastle. So we're just really grateful for all the expertise they brought to and all the extraordinary work you did in a really short amount of time. It's uh, nothing but exceptional. It is Thank wonderful. So and Ben and Claire, you did a fabulous job yes. presenting for us. Thank you so yeah. much. We, we can't let them leave without saying how much we love having them at Ripley. Speaking of community, <laughs> the offices here thoroughly enjoy having the program here. They go over and party with them and do crafts with them and come back and everybody's got souvenirs. And it's just <laughs> been really great. Nice. So we're, yeah. we're, we're glad to have, have you here. And I, really, I really wanted to commend you on finding those opportunities in uh, community for students mm -hmm. uh, so they can be fully present. Um, yeah. Yeah. We're hoping to grow. Yeah. 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 Year one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank, you so Thank, Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Great stuff. If we didn't have so much other stuff to do, I just want to keep them here all evening and talk. Cool. So we've got uh, next thing on the agenda is uh, reading of the minutes from uh, joint meeting on 12, 18, 19. Um, can I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Is that moved for both Hello. committees? Is there a second? Second for both. Um, any discussion, comments, additions? Deletions. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And all, well, all, let's do them separately. Seven. All in favor for Concord? Aye. 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 Okay. Here we go. The minutes are approved okay. by both committees. So, Chair and Lisa, you want to start off? Um, the only thing I would mention is the uh, town caucus is next Monday, the 27th at 7 o'clock. Um, nominations for uh, one open seat on the school committee, one on the select board uh, nomination for uh, town moderator, and I'm not sure if it's one for uh, housing or not. But those oh, are the, yes, I don't think so. I think so those are the uh, those are the ones that are up uh, seven o'clock in the in the main room at the uh, townhouse. Always a festive affair. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I would just mention, I guess, quickly. I'm, it's 7.30. It's always good to be early. I just pulled it up. Is it? <laughs> yes. Actually, that's. It always, yeah. It's, it's a late start. Good. 7.30. Um, yes. That's what I have to do, actually. 7.30. Um, as I mentioned briefly before, I was with the, the League's Education Committee last week and had a great discussion with them. Um, gave them kind of the high levels on where we are with budgets, where the middle school project is, took some great ideas and feedback that I'm sharing with the building committee on that. Um, and as I mentioned, they thanked us for our, our all of our collaborative efforts, which is nice. Um, I think that's it for me. Liaison standpoint, what, what other liaison reports? Just by Let's way just of community around. reports, a few of us, I know you've all was there, uh, went to the MLK observance, uh, Lori was there. Um, and uh, 
not surprisingly, the uh, uh, METCO leadership uh, put together a tremendous program uh, with the Concord Carlisle Human Rights Council. It was uh, really a, a moving evening. It was very, very well done. Uh, one of the centerpieces was the uh, uh, music performed by uh, both uh, community and uh, student groups. Uh, and then uh, there was a, a wonderful telling of the, uh, the METCO story uh, that was very, very well done. And, yes. and it was televised. It was actually ex extremely well attended and very diverse attendance. Mm -hmm. It actually was very, it was a part, very good to me. That's great. Um, other liaison reports? Just the, 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 sub the, the policy subcommittee uh, met this week, um, <coughs> discussed the two new policies that we want to introduce. We're still checking a few things there legally and we'll continue the discussion, continue next. And then there are other things that will come to committee. Okay. Come. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. You ready? Yes. Uh, Concord and uh, Concord Carlisle um, uh, CPAC. Um, uh, has met, uh, has a, a, a next board meeting coming up. Um, it's scheduled for this Thursday, uh, January 30th, from um, at 1:30 to 3 p.m. at Ridley Conference Room Number Four. Um, just wanted to let everyone know that at this meeting, uh, parents can provide input and at a very critical stage of planning process at um, on um, Concord Middle School uh, project. Um, the um, uh, CPAP's uh, parent advice, uh, advisory group uh, would like parents to join them uh, so they can learn about the uh, new middle school. This is an opportunity to provide input what special education students need. And if uh, parents have questions, those questions will be answered by, um, I guess, um, the organization is uh, the um, uh, CMAP. Architects, project managers will be present. Um, and. Um, Superintendent and Director of Special Services will be present also to hear from um, parents um, of special uh, needs uh, students. Uh, January 16th, um, CPAC hosted a presentation on special education uh, mediation and fas facilitated uh, team meetings. Uh, this was to help parents understand requests and prepared mediation. Um, this, this event was, uh, this presentation was very well attended, uh, about 20 uh, parents um, at, uh, were in attendance, a few of them were out of district. Um, next presentation coming up is uh, Basic Rights, Understanding IEP Workshop, <coughs> which will be held February 11th, 7 to 9 at Sudbury Senior Center, presented by Federation of Children with Special Needs. Thank you. Great. Lots of great work going on there. Terrific. Cindy, you had some updates? Uh, just a uh, on FinCom, they met last Thursday. Uh, they went through the warrant um, and uh, just recognized the superintendent would be coming in on the 13th of February. Uh, they also had some questions around the building committee project and uh, they were going to reach out to Mr. Holt and um, maybe a couple of other members of the, just in terms of finances, the finance subcommittee of the building committee. And they also had questions about the um, electric bus warrant articles, and I think there would be a chance for Mr. Folds to sponsor those articles um, to perhaps come in on the same night as uh, the schools. Oh, asked if Mr. Folds could come into the were, finance committee meeting on correct. the same night that we're there, which is correct. February 13th. Correct. Okay. Duly noted. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, great. Thanks yeah. for bringing that back. And was there anything from the select board? Don't you? Right. Oh, well, um, they, they discussed transportation, but that was at the prior meeting, probably. No, I guess it's the most recent meeting. So, okay. setting up a transportation committee. Um, right. That uh, there seems to be some synergy um, amongst mm -hmm. the fact that they were planning to ask uh, the superintendent to be a member or a designee. Um, and I just was thinking, looking at the charge, and they didn't really discuss um, electric electrification of the fleet, but I think clearly that should be the part of that if it's more of a standing committee and you know we'll talk about transportation in a little while but right um, yeah no that's good to know because as we've been talking about a potential standing committee we mm -hmm. want it to be all in sync so mm -hmm. good. and Thank they you. are still uh, deliberating 
on that and will not bring it up again until in February because they have a full budget in their next meeting. Okay, great, thank you, mm -hmm. good to know. Any other, David, no updates? Okay, I think we're good on that then. Um, correspondence, there was just one, this is uh, a fun one to share, um, that the, oh, and now of course my, now I lost it on my screen, here we go. Um, last time, uh, for the Concord group at least, we heard from the Concord Association of Music Parents, Concord AM, mm -hmm. um, and since then, only a couple of days after that, they found out that they will be presented with the 2020 Advocacy Award at the annual MMEA All-State Conference on Friday, March 6th, um, following the, their big meeting. So this is a presentation of a prestigious award recognizing the extraordinary, extraordinary work that this organization has done in such a short period of time. It's so, it's yeah, incredible. it's That's terrific. Great. It's just great to share it. Um, you know, we heard this only a couple of days after we heard about what they were doing. So it's really nice to hear that it's being recognized mm -hmm. so yep. so broadly. So just wanted to share that with everyone. I had one more that I, we neglected to bring up earlier in January uh, on the uh, mentor program. You'll remember John Fawcett was here. I don't remember when he came and spoke on the program and Steve Steve Wells. Yes, so yes. what we heard from John, he'd been looking to sort of pass the baton and we heard that he has found a successor. So that's great news for the program. I that's think great. You know, we all were concerned nobody could fill those big shoes. So Gavin Morris, he's agreed. He's a parent of two high school girls and is looking forward to jumping into that community outreach portion of the project. So we're glad to have, have succession plans in place and sustainable mentorships available for our kids. So That's great. Yeah, we thank Mr. Morrissey with, for his with willingness. Many thanks yeah. to both of them. Yes, yeah, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Very okay. good. Um, Sure, great. And I'll, I'll stay high level because some of this will overlap with the update on my goals that's coming up later in the agenda. Uh, I did want to report back. I did talk with Challenge Success in the uh, late days of December as to some of the ways in which they conduct evaluation. Uh, it was a really intriguing conversation because what I learned from them is that they're still much in that discussion process. Um, some of their internal debates right now are whether they're a product or a process, which I found really intriguing, um, and that they don't look to compare schools to one another. They really look for growth within the community the school resides. Um, what I heard were a lot of qualitative outcomes at this point. Um, they do survey kids, and we certainly participated in some of that, and they look for changes in data. But it reminded me in what I was listening to, some of what we heard from the uh, facilitator when we did the strategic planning was early signs of evidence. And I heard a lot of that in what she described to me. They look for change in the way we interact with one another and the behaviors we see in kids and the way we structure classrooms and set forth pedagogy and instruction. So she reminded me of their framework, which is about the schedule. So it's an acronym, SPACE framework, it's linked to my uh, report so that you can look it up. Um, and really the, the things they ask schools to focus on is, are related to schedules, project and problem-based learning, alternative and authentic assessment, a climate of care, and education for the whole community. Um, they do have strands for parents and they do have strands for community. And we continue to try to ebb and flow between those two. Um, and so we talked quite a bit about outreach and messaging and some of really making sure, starting with the parent community, that they really understand what we're doing, branding and things like that. So I left with a lot of validation, a lot of potential resources as well. She encouraged us to stay in touch. They're really intrigued with the work we've been doing here because we've been involved for a number of years. Um, and as they really try to get their assessment and evaluation structures in place, um, They'd love to get our feedback on those. So we're, it was a great conversation. Okay. Um, in terms of educator evaluation, we're in the midpoint of the year and really focused on formative assessments. Um, I've really had really outstanding meetings with all of the evaluators over the course of late December and early January. Kristen Herbert and I traveled school to school and met with all of them, um, whether it be the assistant principals and principals or the department chairs at the high school and really I felt like we was modeling the professional dialogues we're hoping they're going to go back and have with teachers. So really rich, robust 
conversations about um, more about teaching and learning than the evaluation process itself, which I think is actually how we make progress. So uh, innovative pedagogy, I've attached for you all of the summaries of the ninth grade academy planning, which is really coming together and I think a pretty impressive set of work across every aspect of the high school who committed to this process and the teachers that are willing to participate and really create more of a team-based approach for our ninth grade students. Um, we are taking that messaging on the road to Carlisle, Carlisle tomorrow night and then here at CCHS next week. So hopefully all the eighth grade families will come out and um, learn and listen and ask questions and feel like we really created a different plan. It's going to feel a little more middle schoolish than high schoolish and that's by design. So hopefully that will be what resonates with families and kids as they, as they make that transition. Inclusion and cultural competency. I'll have to start by saying we had our first pre-K to 12 day of professional development pads. You'll remember this vision got snowed out in December so we had to wait another month. As I walked place to place, and I certainly didn't get to all the sessions, it, it was just outstanding and exceptional. A combination of many of our own educators leading their peers, some outside folks, and then this great richness of having preschool with high school and everybody mixed together. Um, and what I felt like I saw were the threads of the strategic plan through all that was being taught and listened to and learned. And uh, that's how we actually make make things happen is when it's at the level of the educators. So it was it was a really great afternoon. Uh, we also met with the Cultural Competency Committee, highly focused this past session on diverse hiring and re recruitment and retention, and really talked a lot on the retention components of um, hiring diverse staff. We continue to review our special education and student support services. I did want to let you know that we are uh, partway into the tiered focus monitoring process. This is the six year cycle that DESE um, requires all districts participate in. Um, they rename it every so often, so it doesn't, it used to be the coordinated program review. Um, so we are doing a self-assessment now and submitting that to the state. Ruth Gruby is obviously living, leading much of it. Um, Kristen Herbert leads the other half and we do civil rights in ELL and Title I. So. School safety, we're making progress with getting badges out to all staff and no building habits. We are building a robust walkie-talkie system and looking to pilot the Crisis Go app, which will allow us um, instantaneous communication. Sustainability, you heard from others out front. I met with them. I'm connecting closely with all of the other groups in town. We co-sponsored tonight's event that is unfortunately held while we're here at Willard um, to, to host Varshini of the Sunrise Movement. Um, we did create a sustainable web page to try to track all of our work. So you can see that under my section of the web page and um, really house all the, all the happenings. Community and collaboration, uh, this list, is really robust right about this time of year. Continual conversations with the League of Women Voters. I am speaking at the Concord Rotary at the end of the month. We're meeting with CPAC next week. The sustainability groups reaching out and connecting with all of them. Uh, as you mentioned, the Concord Carlisle Human Rights Council um, co-led the METCO program. Pets and People left this room um, and is actively bringing therapy dogs to both the middle and high school regularly. And I just wanted to give a plug finally to the Middle School Musical, which is slated for the 31st of January through February 2nd. They are performing Mary Poppins this year, so it should be exceptional. Um, it's very early. It's, it is early. They've changed the timing, intentionally it's changed the Poppins, timing. It depends on the winds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, I think what was exciting was the middle school's uh, thoughtfulness to make this a more community-based event and engage the kids. So the sixth graders will have an in-school performance of the show for them and Thoreau sending their fifth graders over and we've invited all of Ripley and the bus drivers and just That's trying great. to really um, breed our own school community as well. So it's a little busy but exciting. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There's a lot going There's on. There's a lot there. going on. There is. A lot of great things going on. Great. So, uh, transportation report. Great. So, just a little, some context to what this is and why. Um, back in 
December. Uh, as Linda mentioned, Mother's out front and Brian Folds is here, so Brian, please engage with us through this conversation. Um, really reached out to ask us to consider our electric bus fleet and how we might go forward. Um, what we thought was important was to do a State of the Union and give you some history on the bus fleet and how we got where we are. Um, and then I think the ultimate goal is to collaborate with the community and we can talk on the Warren article pieces, but ultimately a master plan needs to get to get developed and that also has to be collaborative with the community, especially CMLP. Um, but we thought it important that the history and our story get shared, both not just with the committee itself, but with the community at large. So Jared's gonna take you back through the the stages of how we got where we are. Great. Just one thing, if I may. Yeah. Uh, other than seasonal adjustments, I think we may have found a new template for yeah. Concord <laughs> yeah. Yeah. presentations. I did find that. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yes. Let me see my question mark at the end. Oh. Uh, so thank you. Um, so back on December 18th, I actually missed the school committee meeting, um, but I was asked to sort of uh, come up with the history of, of our fleet. Um, so I was able to find quite a bit of information over the last month dating back to really 2010. I think from 2010 to today, we can really tell our story a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna hit you with some information and hopefully I can answer most of your questions and then at the end, ask away. Um, so starting with Concord Carlisle. So Concord Carlisle has 20 buses currently. Uh, ages 2006 to 2020. We have two types of engines, the rear and the front. Uh, the rear ones are now becoming more popular and we're starting to buy more of those. Um, all types of mileage and wear and tear. Our capacities for children uh, range from 83 um, to um, 75 to 83 or 50 to 55 adults except for the region's one wheelchair, which holds 67 kids and 44 adults. Um, and then I'll go into later tonight, we pending uh, legal, it's really a legal formality tonight. Uh, we have three other buses that are gonna come in line. Concord Public Schools has 22 buses, ranging from 2007s to 2020s, uh, again with, um, various amounts of mileage and wear and tear. Uh, the capacities of our bus ranges uh, also from 75 to 83 or 50 to 55 adults. Um, and we also have both rear and front, uh, front end engines. Um, you can see in bold, we have our one electric bus. I have some more history on that coming, um, but that we got that in uh, 2016. Um, and as of right now, it's important to, to note, we have four buses that are being leased, uh, and that doesn't include the two that we're asking for tonight. And to back up at the high school, we currently have nine buses being leased, and that does not include the three buses that we're going to ask for tonight. So Concord Z-Line electric bus. Um, so it was grant funded through the Department of Energy Resources, or the DOER. We were one of three districts to be awarded a bus, ourselves, Cambridge, and Amherst. Uh, it's being recognized as the nation's first full-size all-electric school bus in the country um, with a wheelchair lift. The capacity is 66, three per seat, not including the wheelchair. The first in-service day was November 9th, 2016. Um, and we've had, we had mechanical issues really from that day all the way through 2017 until September 2018. The E-Lion staff came, or the Lion staff came uh, down from Canada to take a look at it on site. They were unable to fix it on site. So then we had to ship it to Canada um, in October of 2018. Um, it's important to note they now have a New York facility, so we don't have to send it all the way up there. And then the bus returned to us in spring of 2019. It has been in operation since with no major issues. 
Uh, it travels about 63 miles a day, and it gets about 70 miles uh, on a full, uh, a full battery charge. I wanted to highlight this uh, because of our amazing mechanics. Uh, the Cambridge Public Schools, as I mentioned, got one of, uh, one of the three buses. We have been uh, maintaining that electric bus uh, from the beginning. Um, and uh, I just thought that was really important to note. Uh, we have a history of the hours spent on it and everything, and we'll be building the uh, Cambridge Public Schools for that. But I wanted to give a, a really nice shout out to our mechanics. That's great. So, it, so ours, we, we actually maintained Cambridge and Amherst had, so our was the only one that had mechanical issues in this scope? Um, well, this I'm, I, well, I assume Cambridge because we've been really working on it. Um, I didn't get that far into looking into Amherst as well as Cambridge's, but I know that ours had like, serious uh, mechanical we, issues. And, well, we were so, all, all three okay. communities had issues. And uh, Lion took back the Amherst bus and the uh, Concord bus to do the full rework, and both have been working well since then. Uh, but yes, the, uh, all of this was, uh, as, as the former town manager put it, a leading edge pilot. <laughs> we, we went into it eyes wide open to that aspect, and it, it, we worked through those issues. The price of the novelty of being the first in the right. Okay. But, no, but and through it, or maybe they would have anyway, but basically, our technicians have become so well versed in an electric bus that Cambridge is sending their bus to us for maintenance. That's very impressive. Yes. So just a little history of the number of buses in the fleet. Uh, in 2010, we had 34, 14 of them at the region and 20 at CPS. Uh, we are now up to 42, 20 at the uh, region and 22 at CPS. In 2000, between 2017 and 2018, we added five, and that was due to the new start time at the high school. So here is our average age. Um, back in 2010, it was about three, and then it peaked up to eight in 2015, and I'll explain that, the reason for that in the next slide. But we're right, sort of at the sweet spot, I'd say right now, five years. Uh, I'd say that is where I'm comfortable at, the average age being five years, um, in replacing between four and five buses each year, and that will keep us on that, between the two districts. And Jared, the lifespan of a bus is approximately? Eight to 10. Uh, we'd like to get closer to 10, yeah. um, but it all depends on the route, the wear and tear, right. yeah. I don't know if you have this information, it would be interesting to know. We have three years that we had an average of five years, another three years of six. It would be extremely interesting to know if in 2015, when we had much older buses, we had more mechanical problems. Yes, oh, we did. I assure you. Hey. <laughs> yeah. yes. I remember we yes. did. <laughs> okay, that's an important piece of yes. information. Many breakdowns. <laughs> yeah. When you come to many, evaluate this, many. I would see that we some kind of a <laughs> yeah. and the side is still happening when I got here. So, so that was another yeah. driver for people, driver yeah. for people <laughs> driving to school. Right. Sure. Yeah. No, um, I mean, coming to say why we buy new ones, yeah. there's a missing slide. Yeah, so for slide. four years, while well, we were trying to figure out um, where we were going to house the department, uh, the district did not purchase any new buses between 2012 and 2015. Um, so the reason for a lot of mechanical issues over those four years. In 2016, uh, we bought 10, um, 10 new buses, uh, continued that in 17, got four more. And then in 18, with the change of start, uh, start times, we bought nine. Seven of those were at the region. Five of those were, were um, two only, five of the seven were, were, um, were new. Two were replacements. Um, and then four last year, and then this year will be uh, five. So, you said this uh, maybe it belongs to to the when we come to approve the financing, but and I didn't check it, so I don't. Uh, it just 
The little I remember, is it possible that when we spoke about budget, you had in both Co Concord and region, you had only two for each? Uh, two uh, because now we for have 21. Let's go say that's for next year. So oh. I'm talking really this year. All right. Okay. Next year. All right. Yeah. All right. Sorry. It's going to happen a lot when fiscal years right. in play. As long as it doesn't happen to you, only to me, it's okay. That's right. That's right. <laughs> the purpose of this slide is I just wanted to show you our trade history from 2016. Um, we're getting our money's worth. Uh, you can see a lot of mileage on there. The ones that have the lower mileage, just a lot of wear and tear. Um, they were at least, you know, nine, nine a little. A couple of them were outliers, but um, we're getting we're getting our money's worth right on a lot of this. Two hundred sixteen. That's impressive. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're currently still in round one of the VW settlement grant. Um, so for round one. We uh, put in for one bus. Uh, the way that it worked is they asked us during the application process to get a quote for, from uh, a company that has an electric bus. Uh, we were quoted by Bluebird. The cost of that uh, was $364,971. The charging station was $3,786. The amount that we are going to receive that they did award us is $295,000. What that represents is that represents 80% of the cost of one bus. So therefore, Concord's portion is 73,751 for that one bus. We do know that we can lease this, uh, so that, that is good. We can spread that out over a few years. Um, but that is our, um, our obligation for one electric bus. So we purchase the bus but we do the financing only on our portion. Correct. And most likely this is going to happen in 2021, mm -hmm. this summer. Um, but we're still waiting to hear. We've been, I've been working with Kate Hanley, um, and she's been trying to ask, and we just have no new information right now. So what's next? Um, next is we're going to continue to work on round one. Uh, get this first electric bus in, wait, hopefully there'll be another round two of the VW grant settlement. Um, we need to estimate what the cost of one electric bus versus two electric buses will be. Um, it's not as straight as a $73,000 per bus, because mm -hmm. the way that it works is they will give you 80% of one bus or $500,000 for two buses. Um, so. If we did the five thousand dollars for two buses, the, the price would be um, about a hundred per thousand. What's that? About a hundred thousand per bus. It would be it would be more than that. Ooh, correct, um, correct. It would be about two hundred. So the, the the price for two buses is about seven hundred thirty-seven thousand. They would pay five hundred of that. So our obligation for two of them would be two hundred thirty-seven thousand. Um, we're going to continue to look into all other electric bus grants uh, and opportunities. We're going to continue conversations with the CMLP and with the cost implications and any limitations um, there are to adding this fleet and continuing to build on it. Uh, we did call the state. We do know that Chapter 71 reimbursement, which is the um, reimbursement for the region's uh, mm -hmm. transportation, it would be eligible. Uh, it would be eligible if we were going to do it on the region side. Um, and then we need to continue our bus uh, recycle, uh, replacement cycle. Uh, we don't want to get to the point that our uh, buses can age up to the eight or nine years. And my recommendation would be to continue four to five buses a year until we really figure out what we're going to do in the future. Um, and uh, I think right now leasing is the way to go. Um, uh, the interest rate uh, that you're going to see tonight is 2.52. And uh, with our great rating, um, I think right now it's a, it's a no-brainer. So what about operation costs between regular buses and electric buses? What are the operating different costs? What's the difference? Is it much cheaper, much more expensive? It's another question when you Correct. buy something for 10 years. Sure. 
Well, the, the upfront cost is, you know, 364 versus 140, give or take. Um, you know, it, it, I don't 100 percent know other than, um, you know, the price of diesel. Um, and um, but that's something we got to continue to research on. Uh, do, you, do you have the, the presentation from the Alternative Fuel Committee? So we had, we had done a, a lot of the questions you're asking refer back to the original study that kicked off the pilot for the electric bus. Can, can you hear me? I'm trying to tell you that. Why don't you join us and... So uh, a lot of the questions you're asking uh, relate back to the original um, uh, advisory committee that was formed to research different types of drivetrains for these uh, school buses. Mm -hmm. And in we did a presentation uh, to the school committee back early 2016. Um, I can, I know it's on your website, uh, but we can get that for you. And it, it, it looked at um, the upfront costs versus the maintenance and the infrastructure costs that will go along with these different fuel type vehicles. And the, the end recommendations uh, were, were primarily to get a wash station to extend the life of our vehicles, because that's generally what kills our vehicles is they fail inspection from rust uh, at the end of their life. The other thing was that um, we did, a, you mentioned fuels. We actually had uh, data for over a decade about the price per unit of fuel. Uh, and we were able to show that electricity is very budgetable. It's, it's a consistent low price, um, and is it, the vehicles are cheaper to fuel. Uh, the there's less volatility as well, so you're able to predict what you need to budget for those vehicles easier. Uh, maintenance is is always been an, a question mark, and uh, with the pilot, we show that the maintenance estimates that they were telling us were not true uh, because it was a new vehicle. Um, as these buses get deployed more and more and the manufacturers work out the, the first year's bugs with these vehicles, which Line has done a lot. I mean, that's why when we sent it back, it's come back and really had no major issues. But, but now we're looking at not at Lines. Now we're looking at uh, Bluebird, no? Yes. So uh, the quote that we had in round one was for Bluebird. Um, I have since learned more information about the bus and have some concerns of researching that uh, to try to get you answers about cold weather uh, and make sure that we don't, we, if I feel that we're going to go with Bluebird and have a recurrence of the, the level of issues we had with the first pilot, um, I won't suggest we go that way, but I, I don't have specific answers for tonight on that. So I think we have to remember that on one hand, I think that we all, I believe, we all committed to sustainable solutions, but they have to be practical as well, because Correct. at the end of the day, if we have one out of those buses out of circulation for a year, it puts the whole fleet under much more yes, it does. stress. Right. Um, and and I, I understand that concern. And, um, the experience with the line bus, it did have some operational issues, but it did work and it always had a, a backup because it was one of three wheelchair buses. Um, we meant, you know, we kept that in service. And it it was more of a hassle than it, it should have been, but that was kind of the expectation set with being the first mm -hmm. in the country to deploy one of these. Um, so it did have backups. But the any next bus, um, I wouldn't expect the same level of issues because this marketplace is much more competitive. It's much more, uh, there's a lot of other pilots that have gone on. Um, it's funny that uh, Massachusetts deployed the first electric school bus, uh, but since then, California has hundreds. Um, mm -hmm. Dominion Energy in Virginia is deploying 50. Uh, with, uh, many, yeah. yeah, there's many other, including the Midwest. So there's much Michigan, more information now than it was. A lot more information. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, a, and a lot of rapid advancements in the technology level. So um, I don't expect the pilot to repeat, but I will do everything I can to avoid that and have it be smooth as possible. <laughs> and 
the first recommendation you had at this advisory forum was a wash station? Yeah, it was a, it was a wash station, it's the road salt and so Yeah, no, no, I understand, but did it happen? Do we have it? No, uh, this, oh, you can go ahead. Yeah, please. <laughs> so uh, it, it, the site is uh, the site that was in the, in, in the end selected uh, at WR Grace uh, is a Superfund a former Superfund site, and there are already work that water is already being used to treat a lot of other things, and I don't believe they have the access uh, to do that. Um, That's but, a different agenda. I, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to solve that one today. No, no. <laughs> But um, I, I don't know. I've seen such a big question mark, so I had to ask yeah. a question. <laughs> um, I would like to, um, if it would be all right, the, you had a slide with the one bus for this, this year, and you talked about the cost? Yes. Yes, the 73000 mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, back when we applied, uh, we looked at the option to do two buses, and it came to that 200 and 240000 roughly. Uh, and, and if I correct me if I'm wrong, you budget about a hundred thousand per bus. Uh, a, we, we budget at the least right now for a lease. I budget just under thirty thousand for yeah. a year for the bus. Times. Um, so times three or four. Um, time for the for the CPS this year, I believe it was two uh, new ones. Um, but I, I budget. I budget about hundred thousand of us. For diesel. No, if, if a little bit more right now because about the more. options. Okay. About no, one if, 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 if you get the grant for two buses, it's the same, it will be on par with the leasing that we're doing now for diesel. Well, actually, the reason that I brought a, a town meeting article on funding uh, is that I don't believe it does. Uh, so the reason I want to pull up the slide is it says the charging station is $3,700. Mm -hmm. uh, that is because when the depot was being built, um, I suggested why don't we put in multiple conduits instead of just enough to do one charger. So we're utilizing that existing infrastructure and we don't have any trenching for this first bus. Mm -hmm. When we go to the next school buses, we need to have some kind of plan about how we're going to mm -hmm. run power to from the parking spot to the grid. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that can be quite expensive. And the value that the light plant can see from this bus utilizes bi-directional chargers, mm -hmm. which also would be quite expensive. That's why I said up to $200,000 okay. for two vehicles. Uh, and the other article I have is going to the point of the schools shouldn't have to do this alone. Mm -hmm. And the town as a whole needs to understand how, for example, a, a school bus that has vehicle grid has, as a, as a, as a as a person who pays their electric bill and as a person who pays their taxes, making the investment into a bus to do vehicle to grid nets value to the community under a, under a grant covering mm -hmm. a lot of purchase cost. But the individual departments mm -hmm. may not. Uh, for example, I don't want to see that 40,000, if, if uh, I'm using my own numbers, but if, if you're budgeting 100,000 for each mm -hmm. diesel bus and we get a grant that can do two, and we have to come up with 120,000 per bus, that means 40,000 has to come from educational programs. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're under the FinCom guidelines, so mm -hmm. the town can't earmark an extra $40,000 for you to use uh, for a certain purpose. So I didn't see a mechanism where it could get done in the normal process. That's why I'm going to town meeting to ask for funding yeah. um, to help make sure that we can maximize the grant funding and the town citizens, ratepayers, and taxpayers can fully experience the value of those two buses uh, with that higher infrastructure investment from CMLP with the, the vehicle to grid. Because uh, I, I think not only do people not know the, the $365,000 per electric bus versus 100,000 for a diesel, which is a very important point. But they also don't understand the cost of a kilowatt hour during our capacity peak. So if Concord Light can pull out um, 100 kilowatts uh, out of a bus, I think it's more like 50, but each one of those kilowatt hours over that one hour each year is worth $200 not the 15 cents that we pay on our electric bill, $200. So, 
And there's transmission peaks each month that they can also hit that will reduce ratepayers' expense. Uh, but that value, how do we, how does, how does you know, the, the light plant in the schools work together to figure out how that money flows so that those budgets that are putting in the money are seeing the benefits come back to them? That's where that second article where we sit down, led by the department heads, and write a report on how we can get from A to B and, and do some of these electrification goals. And this turned into a talking about my articles. And yes, I apologize if I distracted from the conversation. But Thanks for yeah. your support on these initiatives. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Um, question about the uh, timing on the regional buses. Um, I mean, we know we're what a year out from being able to get a bus we put an order in today um so to be able to fold these into the into the uh, uh stream of keeping buses up to date it seemed to me we'd want to be doing that now even though we're buying these other buses we'd want to be doing that now so that we would get that those two buses in, in a time frame that would fit for the year that we'd start funding them. So we're not in a situation where we've got to buy four buses because we aren't sure when the electrics are coming in. And I think we also want to make sure we take advantage of that while it's there. So we need volume. Oh, I was going to say you look confused by what he said. I think it. It's I'm just the concept of syncing up delivery with payment. Okay. But, I'm not sure I, I, okay. but I think I get you. I, I okay. usually ask. If I Sorry, go ahead. It's the timing was right. the challenge because of the just... one year delay from when we ordered to receipt of the bus. And I think Wally's. Of the electric bus. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Um, so I think Wally's making a valid point that I was going to actually suggest you consider is just that timing decision making. Um, given that Chapter 71 right now does allow for electric bus purchases. The state's been a little bit intrigued by our phone call. Um, <laughs> and also we caught their attention, right? So I think there's a window here now that may close as they realize that there's nothing prohibiting the high cost subsidy and they may tighten that up. Although we're getting, there's some level of support happening here too, because we're getting emails back very intrigued. So. That said, I think now that we've brought it to their attention that it's something we're considering doing and they realize that there's no ability to stop it if they feel mm -hmm. like it is exorbitant in cost, um, that may change. <laughs> so that may change. I, I tend to feel like we should consider moving forward on the regional side to get in the queue for two buses down. And I'm picking two partly because I think it's a nice gradual ability to transition. It requires the infrastructure upgrades Brian's Warren article starts to address that haven't taken place. Like it feels safe enough that we could, could benefit from the aid without either looking greedy about it or counting on infrastructure. We don't actually have funds to do, you know, it just feels like a middle ground. Um, but I do think you want to consider telling us to pursue that sooner than later um, just Which, because a lot of things could change and then that to pursue what going forward with um, two electric buses at the region okay. because chapter 71 will subsidize what's the rate right now percentage 75 percent of the bus wow. Wow. I think it's a it's a no brainer I mean to me it's a no brainer I think that we should till they shut the door yeah, yeah. yeah. No, well, this, we can we should that, absolutely take advantage of I it I think that our whole quest is about trying to move forward with all kind of solutions that are, I think it's a no-brainer. I think that, I don't know if anybody thinks differently, but I think that it can come. Two, two additional electric buses in a fleet of 42 isn't going to derail any subsequent plan at all. No. Especially if they work. But if you total that up, it would take, we have one on the road now. We know we have one already coming. Mm -hmm. There's a VW, a second round of VW money, which <coughs> all goes well. We could stretch to another two plus the two at the, it starts to add up to five or six. Bigger percentage of six plus <coughs> 18 months. Yeah. And, and then the other thing is like in other things that we, another decision we took lately, the fact that we move forward with it now doesn't mean that if we see that there is some data that 
conflicts, we cannot stop the process. Mm -hmm. So I think we should move as fast as possible to take advantage of all this. And then we'll have more data. Can I ask a quick question first? Sorry. Oh, I'll let right. Brian go. Um, okay, go ahead. Uh, I just building on, on that idea. Uh, yes, so the Volkswagen money has been used with three of the region's transit agencies to do uh, large adoptions of right. electric vehicles, electric buses. Um, with our pattern of trying to buy one and two, it's it's all about trying to work within the existing system. I think right. if we were to go to Mass DEP and say, we're going to continue to do each round with two buses because we're trying to build up our fleet, can we mm -hmm. just you know do a proposal to do a larger purchase mm -hmm. and, and move forward? Uh, is something I think they would. It, we've shown we're serious. Yeah, so I think they would listen. Yeah, no, I think you're right. We should lobby for. A bigger yeah. picture way to do it. But, but Ram, I, I just I didn't want efficiencies. to disturb yeah. you before, and I'd like Jerry to correct me if I'm wrong. But I, there is a piece of information that you use that I'm not too sure that we shouldn't try and uh, adjust. Sure. You, you, the way you present it is that a bus, a diesel bus, costs about a third or less than a. Six. And I actually think it's half. If I understand well, a diesel bus about 170. Yeah, anywhere from 90 to about 132 right now and the, with all the options. The options that we're getting, that we need, is about 132,000. Right. Are those options like uh, the camera system, the radio system? It's a big one, yeah. So those, are, those camera systems and radio systems are also additional to this price. Right. Okay. So this price goes up to 364. By another 20, 30 million. Yeah. So, uh, that's why I've been using that hundred thousand for just because I actually had a feeling that we speak about hundred and seventy. But I, I haven't seen it that high. No, I, uh, that's, so that's what I remember from yeah. this. I I you put it. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I I just want to be clear with this committee that I don't feel Concord should spend three hundred and mm -hmm. four hundred thousand dollars on electric buses out of our own mm -hmm. market. Mm -hmm. It's all about leveraging the, the yes. outside funds that can help us move forward. Yep. Uh, no, we do move forward. I just wanted to ask one quick follow-up question to Wally's point about syncing up the timing. If we start to move forward on this now, are we imagining, let's say, and we think it's a year-long lead time, are we imagining those two potential electric buses in the regional area to hit in the 22 budget then? So then next year we can know where we are and plan for them in the FY22 budget. And it, because it's, it's a 75% reimbursement, right. it won't be dramatic. It won't be dramatic, right. It's but just to know where to put them. The, the active, reliable fleet, right. which we'll be able to plan a year should be out. part of it. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. One Thank of the you. things I'm trying to get clarity on too, just so you know, Kate Healy was going to come to me, she couldn't attend. If the region is eligible for the VW grant, it's mm. really the municipalities right, right now, and it being a region, it's a little, it's not as straightforward. So I need to look into that. Mm. But uh, for the the region right now, you buy a bus four hundred thousand, um, and you put it for, uh, and we lease it, and we get, uh, we would get chapter seventy uh, one reimbursement for the five years that we lease. So if you buy it, you only get seventy five percent one time. So it's good to spread it out. You, can you okay. you only get 75% on that one bus one time? Uh, or however many buses that we buy, technically, at the region side, the region. there is no limit to the reimbursement from the state right now on Chapter 71 on buses okay. for regions. And it's yeah. only for region or to towns as well? Uh, just for regions. No, so, okay. so so we have, I need a little clarification, Chair. Sure. To region, you 75% of every dollar you spend on transportation is reimbursed roughly, right? right. So it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. electric, not electric. Bicycle, whatever. Okay, so that would be like your lease cost or your purchase cost. But right? I'm not trying to understand your. So the the way, yeah. If we, I just look at it as I would rather spread it out over to offset, say, assessments that we do in Chapter Seventy One. We offset instead of if we got it for one year and we got three hundred thousand. Yeah. We would have that as revenue for one year, but if we didn't get anything that next year, we would have. Nice. Our, 
So if you lease it, wouldn't you get the lease cost reimbursed? Correct. Okay, so that's just the lease versus buy. Versus buy. So then the other, I have a couple different questions. So one, another one is, is the VW money, that's state money, that's some big settlement between VW and, but that's at the state level or? Is what? federal or state? It's state, uh, it's, it's, state. it's doing, being yeah, distributed by the state. Yeah. And how does it find its way to this as compared with something else? So, uh, well, there was, there was the lawsuit, the settlement, um, and in that there was uh, mitigation actions that can be taken. Uh, and there's eight categories, all the way from hug boat, uh, uh, you know, replacement and so forth. Uh, and then that goes, those guidelines go to each state, and then each state can make their own guidelines that are more restrictive, uh, which Massachusetts did with the cap and with some other things. Uh, and then those programs are pushed out to communities. Okay, so that's in addition. How would that, so that presently would be a Concord only or a carload. It would be a town specific. Correct. So you could do both, right? You could buy the town buses for, on that money yes. and you could spend the state's money except that the yes. window will oh. eventually close in the state, right? Because I'll say. We, we expect it. Like okay, that. but you might as well go in the window, I agree. So then my last question is, and maybe it's a Brian question. Sure. Given the history of the first bus, the E-Lion, do you want to try to pick a reliable brand and make your fleet that brand? Or is it too it's, difficult it's, to do that? It's point? too early to do that. Um, the So electric buses, Lion was the first in North America uh, with a school bus, uh, but there are many other uh, transit. Transit electric buses are all around the globe. There's right. cities with full electric fleets. Um, I very much like the Thomas product, but it is a Type C with the nose. It has a different passenger capacity. Uh, what we really liked about the Bluebird that we got the quote on is that it is a Type D, the transit style. Mm -hmm. um, which one should be the future fleet? That is, that's, we, we're not there yet. Um, but but for the four, six, eight, however many you're thinking of, are you? We're waiting for Brian to continue to guide us. We've been looking at Bluebirdies, checking on some concerns that came up, especially about cold weather. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, gonna, we're slowing down enough to do our homework. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the decision about which one is premature. We first have to get the grants. Well, that's the thing. No, we, so yeah, I'm, I'm holding up the uh, order process uh, on this first round grant because I had this concern about the chemistry and the battery of the Bluebird, mm -hmm. uh, and once I get clarification on that, they're free to, to order uh, a single electric bus, whether it be that manufacturer or another. Um, I, I, do you mind if I ask one quick question? It's about uh, strategies. We've talked about this before. What's your strategy for making sure we have buses to decondition? Because uh, yep. David had brought it's on up. Your so I hope so I can like. Right. Yeah. I'm actually not really we don't get much to trade in. So uh, we might not even trade in more than one of the five ones that we're yeah. we're um, that we're asking for tonight. So there's a number of things we can do. One, we can sit on them. We just might run out of some room because we have limited parking spots. We can um, we can go ahead and, and look into, say, North Radio Transportation or D Bus and whatever buses they have. We can maybe buy one off them mm -hmm. um, to qualify for this grant for, for little money. Um, so there are a number of options, but right now we're not trading in many. Uh, and we have four or five plus that, you know, um, to, but the, the thing is, it has to be running. To, be, to, to trade this into this grant, it has to be a working bus. Right. It has to be. So. Oh, you have good mechanics. You'll get it to run for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. So. And Dad Cocker's better. Yeah. Might not get back. Um, so uh, the regional piece, which to me is the one that's more time sensitive, um, we're, we're going to vote tonight on three diesel buses. Um, it would seem to me that we should commit to two electric buses now and somehow Mm -hmm. Commit to those with a some sort of payment, mm -hmm. so we don't get into a situation a year from now when the bus is on its way to us and the window's closed mm -hmm. yeah. retroactively. I wonder um, how early I can get the encumbrance in for the, for our artists to allow us for a 2021 purchase. If we can commit the funds now, say it's going to come in the fall, stretching it a little bit, but mm -hmm. in early winter, then maybe they'll allow us to do that. 
So I think that would be, fund, right? yeah, that would be good to come back to us with soon, yeah. so we can make that. Because it sounds to me like we're all we're willing to 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 do that, yeah. and uh, you know, I do think that the window's not going to be open forever. And just to clarify, and I will clarify this more when we get to that section. But the vote tonight is just for the um, the, the spending. We already bought them. It's the um, Cost. I got it. Finance. 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 Okay. So it's nothing to do with <clears throat> new buses. Mm -hmm. Right. And it doesn't replace any of this plan. So this will like as an action item to next meeting, you know? uh, It depends on how much we can learn when they're ready to bring it. Um, this is what I would think, mm -hmm. right? Um, question. Uh, one of the things that I've heard as we've talked about this, there's a limit to what the current grid connection at the depot can handle. And at some point we would need to run more line, mm -hmm. um, which is non-trivial. Mm -hmm. um, how many buses, how many charging stations can we handle uh, with the current configuration, do so, you know? So the depot has four tubes of conduit. Uh, I know you have to put a data line through one of them. Um, so. Uh, two to three chargers could go there. Uh, the, the, the good thing is, is that that solar array that's right next to the depot has a direct connection to the uh, substation. And so dropping a, a second service line uh, there, just like for the building for the depot, uh, I don't think would be that difficult. Uh, but that's, again, going back to the department heads coming together, writing a report, working in partnership to envision what not just the, the school bus fleet, but what all the fleet will look like, and then what kind of infrastructure needs to go in will allow the town to, to forecast some of those costs better. Um, uh, Concord Light is doing this with uh, multifamily dwellings, uh, where they have a pilot where they're going to work with three communities in Concord to put this infrastructure in, but they're doing different configurations so they can learn to do those cost estimates and, uh, and, and do the next projects better. Uh, and those, that kind of learning is, is ongoing. So I don't have an answer for forecasting what that could cost, uh, but the, the, the work needs to be done in that report. And if that's the point of, of it, is to answer those kind of questions. As you get to multiple buses, is there a point where you can use, I mean, if you've got two buses, you probably need two chargers. Okay. But if you've got six buses, can you keep the fleet charged with four? You could. Uh, I, I, would, I would prefer to see us do a, a charger per bus. Mm -hmm. The reason being that in order to get the vehicle to grid value out of it, you mm -hmm. want to have a large enough connection for all those buses to push backwards onto the grid mm -hmm. and uh, and lower our peak at the substation. So, you, uh, preferably, uh, you want to have a charger per bus. And there's nothing that requires that charger necessarily to be at the depot. No, uh, it, it's. Uh, you want to take it home? Yes. Yeah. Let's yeah. take it to your house. <laughs> no, no, the, uh, so vehicle to grid is done with uh, some Hondas and some um, some BMWs, and they they do it as grid control. I, I'm going to distract the conversation yeah. by going into details, but yeah. yes, it does. It doesn't have to be at the depot. The depot is uniquely positioned because it has such a large fleet and it has such a direct connection to the substation that it's a it's a really mm -hmm. good first. Yeah, event. great. Good. Thank you for all your work on this. We're lucky to have you. Yes, yes. thank you. It's interesting. <laughs> it is. And Jared, thanks for pulling this all together. Yes. This is really helpful to give That's us a great. big picture of where we stand. And I sent you the presentation from 2060. If you can just confirm that I sent you the correct one. I found it. The alternative fields. Yes. So oh, I sent you the one I think it is. Cynthia is multitasking always. Oh, she's she doing already it. sent it to you. Okay. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Jared, Jared, one thing I thought about this. Well, while it's still relatively fresh, it might be good if we could capture the difference in fleet mileage uh, with the depot versus when we had buses in Belreca oh, yes. and Acton um, because of there's mileage savings there and it would be good to be able to equate that to a dollar figure because we do 
you know, we spent a lot of money on the depot. I think it would be good for the town. Plus, they're better maintained. That we have yeah. better maintenance, yeah. sure. which is harder to quantify. Yeah. But the mileage is an easy number sure. to get at. Yeah. We just, if time passes, well, it'll be harder to get. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Anything else on that? All set? Done with it? Moving on. Great. Um, okay. So we're in goals. Yeah, about goals now. Aaron, if you don't mind scrolling for me so I can sit, I'd appreciate it. So, and I don't want to spend too, too long on this, but I had a lot of information. So we're, we're happy to take this in as much depth or higher level as you would like. Um, what I tried to do was provide at least some benchmarking as to the work we've done so far this year. I didn't go to that next level of giving you dates and things like that as to when things happened. I could, but I haven't had the feeling the committee wanted that before, so we'll start here and then you can give me that feedback. So I'll talk at a high level and to dialogue, obviously, and we can talk on questions as we go. Um, so my first goal was around providing targeted instruction to students to close gaps and address needs. This really encompassed both RTI and special education. Um, we have a very robust sixth grade RTI system in place now. The schedule allows for a true RTI block. Um, CCHS has also created um, formal RTI blocks in English and math. I'm working with Mr. Cameron on developing a schedule and options for the seventh and eighth grade. Um, it, it, I heard a lot of the desire for that from the staff last week as we were talking about the new school. Um, we've been using data to drive our focus on writing in K through five. So we've, um, you'll remember that's in their school improvement plans and it's been really fun to walk buildings and see us reinvigorate our writing program through Lucy Calkins model. Um, we continue to review and modify service delivery to the buildings where we made the most changes. That would be the middle and high schools and looking at what's been effective, we've adjusted along the way for sure. Uh, discussing foreman and needs in the specialized programs, um, and that includes everything from launch all the way down uh, to the intensive programs at the row. Um, continuing to watch the enrollment in those programs um, for trends, patterns, uh, still looking for to identify which students those in-house programs can service, who's still going out of district, um, things like that. Uh, contracted services, you heard mentioned in Jared's report, uh, Ruth's been really diving in deep to looking at where those monies have been going and what we now have capacity for within the districts. Targeted training, um, language-based needs is a continual discussion across all levels and making sure we're, um, we have the professional capacity to service kids um, with those kinds, of, those kinds of gaps. And then more training also in terms of inclusion and any specific areas need. I'm starting to hear, and I think it's really great feedback coming from different settings, but it's the same tone of the regular educators are needing more training too, and we need to identify what that looks like and what that plan needs to be and make sure we're actualizing that for the coming, coming school year. The next goal um, is about the evaluation system. Uh, so I'll update you. We've talked on some specifics recently, but just high level view. Um, we've been looking at all the benchmark points in the timelines, spending that with the administrators and doing work with the staff. Um, we've had a common set of slides we shared at every staff meeting to get the process started this year. Um, we're meeting currently with the CCTA to look at the evaluation language in the contract, which is what we did with CTA a year ago. Meeting with all the evaluators like I discussed. Um, formative assessments across the schools. Those are due coming up into February and March. So Kristen and I will be reading those for consistency and whether we're making gains in that common structure and messaging. Uh, we're gonna be using DESE's collaboration, calibration model with the uh, evaluators at the leadership team level. There's all sorts of free resources. DESE continues to put out you know, videotapes of teachers that the group can watch together and then process the feedback so that we continue to get more synced up and then trying to model the process with the administrators with their goals and their formative status mid-year. Um, that'll be upcoming in the next month. Creating a learning environment that offers new approaches and our students that dared active and engaging. Um, it really, really beefed up what I put into the weekly Sunday email I sent to the staff. Um, it comes with highlights 
of what's going on in district, sharing of best practice and innovative ideas. When those come along with permission, I ask teachers if I can share what they did with the rest of the um, pre-K-12 staff. Um, there's always an article that touches on one of our threads of the strategic plan. Yesterday's was a twofer because I had both cultural competency and um, social emotional learning and how those two cross, cross paths. So we really tried to continue to push things out. We've been working with local experts. Uh, Harvard's uh, John Meadow was here to meet with a small group of leaders this summer on their new, their new text um, based on research and deeper learning. Um, sharing out some of what I've been familiar with in my other roles as high, high tech high and those real exemplars of what um, real pure innovation, student-centered, project-based learning looks like. Innovative, innovative lessons, like I said, I've been sharing. Um, as I spotted in the classrooms as I walk, which I've been doing regularly with the building principles, really reflecting on what that looks like and how we can share among each other. There's so many strong seeds um, to build off of that some of it's just communication. Uh, Rivers and Revolutions, really trying to maximize that resource. All Grade 5, as you know, is, is working with Rivers this year. They're about to start their second round. Um, I've already asked Michael to bring you a summer summary at the end of the year with some fifth graders and some high school kids. So we're planning on that. We're in discussion of a Rivers Light program that um, will go in as probably a CEF grant um, at the middle school. I can't underestimate the power of my messaging just to say to people, try new things. That's what we want you doing. Take the risk. It's okay if it doesn't work. And I'm actually hearing from the evaluators sometimes they're getting invited in for observations because they're going to try new things. And I think that is maximizing both of those components that the evaluation process is being used as a, a feedback loop for like, this is what I wanted to try. Come, come watch me experiment. Um, Cause that expresses obviously some safety in that process as well. Um, and then the CMS visioning work, which we kicked off last week, we're going to leave that work and have a robust professional development plan to build over the next three years to make sure that we're maximizing the space that that building affords us and have a common vision and um, know what we want teaching and learning to look like. Budget, uh, you were part of this directly, so we'll um, skip through some of the pieces here, but we obviously brought budgets in that were really sound and at minimum level service while we came in um, below the Concord Finance Committee's guideline for the high school, which Carlisle then matched, um, and are now not far off of the guideline for CPS. And if we total them together, we're still just a shade below. We continue to reallocate resources um, in special ed, specialists. Um, I don't want you to think the budget sits in between cycles because it just doesn't. Jared does the living, breathing part of the numbers, but there's a living, breathing part of how the money's spent too. And when we get a get an idea, we um, try to find the money from another place that we've either decided we could do differently or maybe isn't needed. And I think we continue to build the collaboration and communication with both finance committees. Um, I think we're feeling some positive feedback from them. Always more to do and more to grow, but been a good positive cycle so far. Um, this next one then is the healthy learning environment, which has a combination of both uh, student wellness and the safety and sustainability of the school environment itself. Ninth grade academy is a huge portion of that. I've been directly involved in meeting with department departments and talking on what it looks like and why we're talking about it right on to just supporting Mike and Kristen and the team that's helped get the logistics together. Um, I think we've tried to really name our concerns for student wellness in a more explicit way this year, um, whether it be newsletters, meetings, um, referencing challenge success, which I want to do in a broader way and really flush out. Um, I think supporting true monthly homework free weekends, we've really, I think, built that into our routines at the middle and high school in a way that our uh, I think we're doing them with more fidelity than we were. So I'm glad that we've been able to support that. The therapy dog's another example. Connections between student engagement and wellness. And I think this is a piece that's still in its infancy. We've been trying to stress it, uh, I think at least as we promote the innovation, um, the more engaged kids are, the less stressed they are. And we need to see how those pedagogy and mental health pieces balance one another. So we're putting those kinds of seeds out. I actively 
participate in Kristen's social emotional learning committee across the districts. Um, and we've been directly working as a leadership team with the consultant that's leading us. Um, so she's been to three different meetings now and we'll come back again in March. We have climate surveys going out next month uh, to parents, students, and staff so we can triangulate um, growth or areas of need across those three groups of stakeholders. Um, re continuing to review the success and challenges of the reconfiguration of CMS, far more successes than challenges. Um, safety efforts, which I mentioned tonight, and then of course sustainability efforts, which I also mentioned tonight. So um, that's a big list, but a lot of great things for kids and others in that list. And that is that is a joint. All of these are joint efforts. You know that, but that one especially. Cultural proficiency and inclusivity. I do sit with uh, on the cultural competency committee. We've met twice so far. We're actively looking to retain and hire more diverse staff. We go to the uh, hiring fair in March. We're having a pretty thorough discussion of what affinity groups need to look like back here. Um, now that we're better understanding the challenges of being a diverse staff member in a pretty homogenous setting. Um, we have an equity audit, which I've mentioned to you, planned for this spring, where we'll be really gathering feedback, not unlike the climate culture audit, but in a very specific way as to equity across um, a specific focus on uh, race in that one. Um, again, I, at the end of my emails to the staff, we present them the upcoming special events out of our culturally competent calendar, our best efforts to be, so staff are aware of dates that are coming up over the coming weeks that might impact students. Um, all the specialized programming, which is growing from the bottom up, which is even more exciting, the playbook initiative coming up at middle school. We have international festivals at, at, at least four out of the five schools this winter and spring. Um, really good stuff. Uh, my work at MASS in my mentor group has been highly focused on ed equity and looking at our DESE data across lines of subgroups and things like that, which has been very eye-opening. The piece that we had already identified and confirmed through that process was needing to really look at the number of um, students of minority in our AP and honors classes at the high school. So that's become a focus for us this year. Um, in terms of other work in inclusivity, we're communicating regularly with CPAC. Um, we're advocating and looking for funds for the inclusive playground at Thoreau. The capital art article in Concord will fund a portion of it. The PTG at Thoreau will fund another portion and we just put in a um, community chess grant for a third portion in hopes of really doing something more than a little bitty mm -hmm. bit at a time. Um, and uh, we're going to have a unified uh, track uh, spring group this this spring. This spring, I can't believe it's going to happen this spring, but the high school really ran with it as we brought it up. Um, so that'll be exciting. There's a team going to be in place. Um, that will lead to probably unified basketball. Mm -hmm. I learned two weeks ago there's unified cheerleading. Like my, yeah. my vision's just got bigger. So. Wow. <laughs> um, and Bus Buddies, we're expecting to kick off this fall. <laughs> a little more work to do on that. And then finally, just the partnerships between the schools and communities. Um, it's been incredibly valuable to go to Concord, uh, the townhouse every Monday morning and sit with the department heads across the across the town we just are so much more synced up because we sit together weekly um, working regularly with all the officials and committees in both towns um, I think we're building some nice just ebb and flow you've heard some of my list of uh, stakeholder groups that I've been meeting with recently I've been trying to really focus in on the senior citizens that wasn't my goals this year and right now I've been doing it where the opportunities are mm -hmm. and um, been to the Thanksgiving lunch I'll go to the St. Patrick's Day lunch um, there's a middle school breakfast right before the break um, and I think this poetry and rhyme they'll be here in February to share with you the seniors come into a high school freshman English class and read poetry together um, that's been funded through the Carlisle uh, Council on Aging we're actually putting in for a community chest grant to expand that further and um, build it out more so it's both Concord and Carlisle collaboratively but uh, the seniors have much to offer us and uh, they're a lot of fun to be with and you want to continue to promote that so okay. it's been a great start to the year we're getting a, we're doing an awful lot of really good things um, really really good things and I think you can feel the un the unity of the focus and the mission and the goals all seems to be 
syncing up, which means it's work from everybody's on the same page doing the same work, and that's how it really moves. So it's been great. Can I just say I'm blown away seeing all of that at once. I mean, that's incredible. Nice. It makes yeah. me want to say. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's definitely. It's for Monday. What are you doing Tuesday? Yeah, right. Um, again, I think, you know, I'm, I'm up here as hands-on in some places, but not by any stretch all of those places. And that's, I think, what happens when you build a common vision that we're just sort of steering the direction which had buy-in and support and people are now actively bringing ideas to the table and all we do is foster that support so I'm not gonna say I'm not working really hard to do all this I definitely am but it's it's coming from every direction and being well supported so and you're empowering people to do that yeah I think that's probably right yeah, yeah. telling them to go and get out of the way right um, I can't help but make two comments and I'll make them quick but one is that it's one thing to create a strategic plan, but it's another to really execute it like this. Like yeah, the, I mean, this is incredible to see where we were two years ago talking mm -hmm. about needing a strategic vision. Mm -hmm. and, and this is so much progress on mm -hmm. those fronts that we talked about in strategic planning. So it's really exciting. Yeah. Um, the other one, and again, both of them tie into the history that I have here, but the thing that jumped out at me most in that report is you're telling us that teachers have asked for an evaluator to come in and observe while they try something Starting new for the to, first yeah. time. Yeah. And that, I mean, not only does it tie into multiple goals, evaluation and new pedagogy, and it, but th that, the fact that you've helped to create an environment of safety and trust like that is just a different place from where we were. And that environment enables so much to happen. Yeah. So that, that's, I yeah. just want to appreciate that. Thanks. Anybody else? Have, sorry, I jumped in. Comments and questions? Um, I'm glad you did. Because um, I think uh, praise is uh, well, well earned, so thank you, Lori. A um, uh, couple of comments. One, in regard to the try new things, uh, just uh, a comment, and that is that I hope that you're helping to establish norms whereby mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. when a try new things mm -hmm. is something that uh, she or he mm -hmm experiments with uh, with classroom pedagogy for example and then there's another order of magnitude where they check with colleagues and yep. discuss first uh, before they make the leap yep. um, and further that there's uh, some feedback loop yeah. so that uh, others benefit yeah. and I think that's uh, uh, essential for you to lead sure. the way on that and set the tone yep. for that Absolutely right. uh, you mentioned gaps a couple of times um, and I'm guessing that in the near future we're going to hear if any DESE reporting, planning and reporting uh, requirements around gaps are going to call for any changes on our part, on your part. I don't know if we're most yeah, of the I, way there already. Right, so that comes to us in, I think, I would, I would say two different streams of information. One is obviously the MCAS and the feedback we get there about where we're doing well and where we have work to do. Um, no doubt special education is still an area of work to do. Mm -hmm. um, the growth rate there is not what it is with the general population, so we've already focused there. Not to the point we're in any dire straits in terms of accountability and all of the state's mm -hmm. mandates, but for our own yeah. level of expert expectations, we continue to want to work there. In terms of the formal review that is going on now is a document review essentially and then they come on site to confirm that. So it's a compliance edit audit of are you following special education law, rules, regulations, all of that. Um, we're going to be really curious to see where we are. I think Ruth Sentry's given us places we know we have work, work for growth, especially in getting um, compliance to look the same across all of the schools. Um, so I think we've identified some of our own areas that will be really interesting and we value the feedback from everyone, state included, to direct us in other directions. So. We'll look forward to more. Thank you. Yeah. Um, in terms of retention, we, we don't uh, speak of staff retention as a general mm -hmm. problem, but you're looking at it specifically around mm -hmm. uh, uh, perhaps groups that are uh, more up underrepresented yeah. than we would like. So I would hope yeah. that uh, we, yeah. we have a plan and a timetable to look more deeply. Yeah, I think that. there's two layers there and some of it really fresh for us in the last few weeks. Um, I think because we're creating an environment where this is so important to us, 
um, staff are opening up to tell us just how hard it is and frankly told us a couple of stories that were really hard to hear about comments that were said or things like that that we can't just assume everyone's treating them the way that we might want. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's one piece, but I think the other is really giving them a feeling of a cohort, just like we, that's in all the research of all, all subgroups of people need to feel like they're connected in a, mm -hmm. in a way that they're alike as well as mm -hmm. among differences. So I think we're trying to establish that. And at this point, given the number of diverse staff, that may mean we need a district-wide right. affinity group. And we've been trying more at the building level. And I think we're reassessing whether that's, Sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned cohorts. So my final one, uh, the, the ninth grade academy mm -hmm. is a cohort model, mm -hmm. which I think uh, mm -hmm. people are uh, very hopeful about and favorably inclined toward. Um, and I'll just pose it as a question that I would hope uh, we consider over time, and that is uh, the the value of branding it with a title like that. Is that that? that Depending what was it like? Ninth grade academy. Uh, ninth grade academy. Um, Calling out ninth grade as a ninth grade academy, I, I just yeah. think we ought to uh, yeah. watch Sounds that over time uh, and, uh, and and examine what yeah. influence does that have on uh, how that program evolves, how it yeah. shapes, how, how people identify with it, mm -hmm. and what it means to ninth grade. To right. So give we ninth um, grade a there's a little story name. to the name already, and I think you make a really interesting point, and in, you intrigued me already. Um, it's very traditional that high schools that have started this kind of approach in the in the ninth grade have called it a freshman academy mm -hmm. to distinguish it being a different structure than the rest of the school, mm -hmm. for good or bad, now that you bring that up. Um, in our inclusivity discussions, uh, Kristen Herbert insisted we call it ninth grade and not freshmen. Yeah. Ah. She's going to change that name. As a single human being, I think. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so that's already evolved. But you make a good point of: is it just who we are as a high school, or is it and maybe Name, one leans and, into the other? Yeah. Yeah. Names and labels yeah. relate yeah. to how one identifies, and yeah. I, I'm not suggesting I know what it means. Yeah, no, it's a good, I, good I point. I think it'd be something worthy of keeping right. an eye on. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I thank, had you. A, uh, thank you. Good. So I had a. Um, comment about the ninth grade academy. Mm -hmm. It's very welcome to see that students coming in from middle school and um, are treated uh, a little bit differently uh, and are supported as they have um, uh, they, they have a lot of needs um, adapting to new structure and new place and new expectations. So it's great to see and I know that uh, a lot of what we're doing is coming out of challenge success and their evaluation. Um, I have acquired a so, uh, kind of great work and I'm looking forward to uh, see the feedback that we, uh, will be coming our way uh, from parents of the current ninth graders and uh, future ninth graders. Uh, question is, um, is the climate survey that uh, will, be rolled, uh, will be rolled out, will, that be, um, will there be a, a particular focus on, on that group of um, with questions so we can get a better understanding of who? you know, what, what uh, parents are asking, what maybe more comments um, specifically to the success of, of, of uh, what has been already piloted at the ninth grade level. Right, this so the survey itself is a research-based survey that we're working with out of a nonprofit organization. Um, so it's, it's a set survey. It's not one that we can doctor because it's aligned with particular components mm -hmm. of the research and then it's triangulated across all three surveys. But that's not to say we won't have feedback. Now, if we do it this spring, these ninth graders won't answer based on ninth grade academy. They'll based on right. what they know, which actually is going to be an interesting baseline, I mm -hmm. think. Um, so we'll be able to sort them out in terms of how they view. Certainly, there'll be components related to that transition, even if it doesn't directly ask that. And then the intent of this climate survey is that you give it every other year. Um, so two years from now, we'd be able to reassess with the ninth graders who are embedded in the program and start to look at what changed and where we're still needing to grow. So um, doesn't mean we couldn't do a separate standalone survey just in terms of the night, the academy itself. Um, but I think we'll have some data we could extrapolate and be informed on how kids are feeling about their high school experience as a baseline for today. So That's a two a years from that look or next year look? Um, so this survey is designed to be given every other year. So we would give it this spring and then do it a 
two years from now, but there's nothing to Why? say we can't make our, because that's how it's, the research is based. But if you're changing your model so dramatically, wouldn't yeah, you want to Yeah, we could talk snatch? about it. I would want their feedback, or we could make our own. I mm-hmm. think either way we could get data. You definitely want to. Yeah. yeah. I think we all have to realize, I'm sure the superintendent by now got uh, some comments about it, but we all have to realize that the communities, anything else in education, there's always pros and cons in the community. And I already got the, the reactions of parents that, of course, think that we need to push them more rather than less. <laughs> so we just have to, you know, I remember my first year on the SAC in the middle school, I said something to Lynn Beatty, then the, uh, the principal about homework, and she said to me, on every 10 parents that come into my office and say they're too much, homework, the other 10 that come and say they're too, too little. So I already got, and know about the science, we have to push them more, we have to, mm-hmm. so we just have to realize it and actually try and do the best that we believe is the right thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, I would echo what <coughs> Heather said, Evan, watch this, and also he mentioned a couple of things that, you know, we're aligning ourselves with SE regs and mandates and that sort of thing. When I came on the committee, we were having a hard time implementing mandates. Mm-hmm. It was as if we were this big elephant was sitting on us, um, and uh, it's you know not just the strategic vision exercise that has helped us get to where we are, but there's a whole aspect of you know the way the way you are managing the district. Uh, from superintendent seat um, that allows for, you know, as Heather pointed out, the trust level that exists now in such a short period of time because there was no trust here. I'm before pretty you aware. Came in the- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've noticed? Yeah. And, uh, you know, to be able to turn that around and, and to do the kinds of things that have been done uh, with a strategic vision exercise. Yeah. And to look at that, I mean, that makes me tired. Just, I was hoping you, every slide was the end. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to see anymore. Um, but uh, it's extraordinary. And, uh, and I think uh, I commend you and your team for, for what you're doing. And, you know, I think we, we're we gonna look at our own goals here in a minute, but, you know, one of the things we, we sort of lose sight of is that, um, yes, we have a full complement of administrators now. We do. Really but most of them are in their first six yeah. months of being here. And uh, I don't know about anybody else, but my experience on onboarding people has been that, you know, it takes six months to figure out where everything is. Um, and uh, so <coughs> it's, it is a massive change, I know, from uh, both People inside the buildings and people outside the buildings in the community are constantly pointing out the change and uh, many accolades for you and your staff. So um, that is not lost on me. Thank you. So much of this is just the relationship building, which is what we're talking about with the kids. It's just as critical with the adults. I think that's what's grown. And then the sky's the limit. Absolutely. Thank you also for taking the time to put this together Yeah. because it does help us. One of the things we'll get to on our goals, of course, is executing that evaluation at the end of the year. And it's really helpful to have this halfway through and see where we are and see how much you've done already. And, and Yeah, it's a great point point in the year. So, We're going to take a look at all the goals across the district at next week's um, administrative meeting. And it just lets you formatively look at where you are, course correct weed out if there's things you're just not going to get to you know and just adjust so and then oh yeah we 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 have we kind of lost track of that one you know that kind of thing and that would be my one follow-up question is there anywhere having looked at this and looked at your goals that you feel like Um, "Uh, wait i need to adjust a little something here there there wasn't really that was validating actually okay did this so it might be that the emphasis or the time has gone a little more one direction than i had thought it would but Nothing major. Okay. Yeah. Great. Terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Comments.
Just one question. Are you doing rivers in Carlo? Have you talked yes. About yeah, they're setting the schedule up um, for March through. Yeah. Yes. So on to uh, first reading of school committee policies. I'm just going to lead that. Okay. Is someone giving us highlights? I don't know if the committee wants to. So uh, I'm sure Dave and uh, Yuval can uh, offer up. Uh, additional information. What I can say is that uh, there are no uh, highly significant changes here. Uh, the uh, references to MASC were checked to see where it's identical. We uh, make it known that it's identical. Where it's not, there's no reference to it uh, in that way. Uh, the transportation policy was simplified to make it uh, uh, abundantly clear that uh, if you're on a school bus, it's a school activity period, no distinction between one kind of trip and another. Uh, and uh, as to school councils, I'm not sure if we did anything more than uh, I think that the reaffirming most, uh, it. The most uh, significant change is the improvement, school improvement plan before it had to be approved by us okay. as school committee and now right. it's by superintendent, but it's a change in the law and it's still, the superintendent has to bring it to us. But, so, but the formal approval is superintendent and that's a change in Massachusetts law. So by July 1, it's uh, in your hands for the following year commencing in September. Yeah, yes. after, yeah. but that's the, the main, the other in hazing, it's just uh, we adopted a more mm -hmm. a actual NAC policy that according to the change in law. So that's the only, the only change in all those four policies is the approval by a superintendent of school improvement plan mm -hmm. rather than a school committee. Dave, anything? No. Any questions for the subcommittee? Mm -hmm. so these will be on the uh, action items for next round to approve, I assume, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, well, let's get to that variance report for the region. So just like the Compton report, um, in front of you is the variance report by 100 function as well as the 1000 function. Um, this was run right at the end of the year. Um, so at the end of the year, we had a positive balance, unencumbered balance of 2172857 Since that time though, we have uh, gone over many of the special ed tuitions. Um, we have uh, transferred some things into the revolving accounts, so that number went down quite a bit, um, but we're still in great shape, um, and uh, we're in good shape. There's no way to say it, we're in really good shape. That's great. So we're seeing a year in from the end of last fiscal year? Say that again? What is this? Is this? No, so this is where we are as of 1231, uh, 19. So, so you're two million count. ahead still. Mm -hmm. We're two million right down. now as of as of uh, yeah as of December thirty first. Uh, we're two million ahead. Okay, and this is not like this is this year money. Right? Correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if I'm correct, <laughs> <laughs> or something. <laughs> and you're not anticipating necessarily adding to your encumbrances, but maybe the opposite. Um, we will be adding uh, will be some a, things you can okay. encumber, such as say substitutes. Uh, but we will be adding um, when I uh, when we go through the budget, especially for maintenance and some of the equipment that we have not put in for yet. Um, so it will be a mix. But I, I, I'd like to think it's going to probably be more encumbrances than less. But as we go through special ed, especially the contract services. Those are always, even at the end of the year, as much as we try, there's always some adjusting. Thank you. This mirror is a little bit like last year, um, but like I said, we, we're, we're in really good shape at the region. Question on the 100, just clarification. Yes. And if you don't have the answer right now, it's fine. Sure. Um, 7,300 equipment? Yes. What's the $57,000 adjustment? Uh, that, what was the adjustment? What's it, what, is this, what, were, what did we do that obviously we weren't anticipating? 
Oh, the, the 97,000? Yep. So it was 14. Uh, uh, now it, it adjusted to 57 to a total of 71,000. Um, new equipment. Um, we put in 52,000, um, but that was transferred from, uh, I want to say the 4,000s. Which wouldn't add up. Uh, I'll get you that. Um, yeah, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Yeah, just yeah. but I know I know a big one is new equipment at the high school. Um, copiers. Oh, well, we had family copiers. Um, the old ones that come over from the old building. So yeah, at least time. So we did invest yeah. in copy machines. Well, I think the school. idea was that they were going to get tossed out. Wait, that nobody needed them. Yeah, that didn't right. play out that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, let us know if you have other questions in there. Uh, oh, yep. it's that, and it's a um, it's special ed. Uh, we bought a bus, oh. so um, that was another. Uh, I mean, it's small, in there as well. small, small, small. Yeah, small. it's actually what's getting the launch kids to and from the high school, oh, so yeah. they can be participate and, and all through the community. Right, right. Okay. So, yeah. Those are pretty much the two big purchases. Yeah. So, so that was the motor vehicle. Twelve or fifteen, twelve passenger van. Okay, great. 12. Thank you. Yeah. And just like I asked on the other, no directional surprises. Obviously, things that change the here and there, but no big, very, no big surprises. No, no. great. No. I think a good surprise is the tuition numbers that are coming in. Yeah. Keeping kids in. Great. Thank you. All right. Okay. Any questions for Chair? Um, school committee goals update. All right. Let's talk about our goals. Um, so we have them up here. Um, I, I wish I could <laughs> say that I had slides that showed that we were as productive as Lori has been on her goals. Um, that won't it, be possible. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, but I did feel like, we both feel like, we need to go through this list that we put together at the beginning mm -hmm. of the year um, and take a realistic look at it. It's now January, um, although our you, you know, our, our fiscal year goes through June, but we have this set of the seven of us through basically the end of April. Uh, and I think we need to look at this list and figure out where exactly we are, what we've done, what we still need to do, and what are the priorities to make sure that priorities fit into the next few months. And as Laurie said, sometimes mid-year you look and you, you adjust. And realistically, we might have to adjust given all of the things here. So I wanted to just kind of go through first. Um, some of them we can all, you know, we can agree on the status to develop FY21 budget and capital plans. We've done our part in that so far, and we will continue to support the town meeting. I think that's pretty clear. It's not something that's negotiable. Um, I do want to keep in mind as we go through all of these, some of them, as we've pointed out, are yearly responsibilities we, mm -hmm. that we always do. Some are up to us, mm -hmm. um, and yet we want to keep in mind that strategic plan that is driving Dr. Hunter's goals and driving the district goals, and we want to stay aligned with that, I think. Um, so just as, as a lens to look at this. So the yearly things are pretty standard. We will do the evaluation. Um, and well, I'll put it out there, promoting community engagement and communication. Um, that's, you know, I would say we're doing a pretty good job of that. We've gotten some good feedback recently, um, but that's kind of an ongoing thing. Anybody can jump in with thoughts on that. In, uh, if we're going to take yeah. these off as we go, the only thing I would offer up is uh, I'm learning the, the value of individual invitations to community members. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing all this other stuff, but... Uh, uh, I think we get good results also when we mm -hmm. invite somebody to one of the community meetings, for yep. example. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's extra time, but uh, people like to be invited. Yep. So for what it's worth. Yep, where we can, that makes sense. Um, okay, so specifically under our goals for this year. Um, for Concord only support the CMS building project, I think is a, is a pretty clear given. I think we're... We, mm -hmm. I would say, as a member of the Conquer Committee, that we're supporting it pretty well. Sorry? Supporting each other? I, I want to I back up one, if I may. Hmm. Yeah. To, to Carlisle. Okay. If I'm correct, you're, yep. you're down at... Uh, oh, you know what? I'm looking how at... We, a, how are we doing? Sorry, sorry. Did I skip one on yours? I 
printed out what I thought was the last version. Is it not the same? If we're just going through this, this line is the by line, line. Yeah. yeah. I, I simply want to pose a question. Um, it's midway. Uh, should oh, sorry. should we be doing anything? Can we be doing anything v differently vis-a-vis -vis Concord Carlisle relationship? Not a leading question. I don't know, mm -hmm. but just I have the cool things that we don't pause and ask it often. So well, I'm, I'm happy that Doctor. Oh, who's coming tomorrow? The Mike? whole high school administrative team. Yeah. Just for the ninth grade. Yeah. Eighth yeah. Grade, I mean, it's whatever. something that I petitioned um, mm -hmm. have the Carlisle administration to ask for for since basically the eighth grade experienced as an eighth grade parent and there was some you know flap I guess about the article that came out but the fact is maybe it had to get you know it had to get a little inflammatory press to get I'm not speaking for Dr. Hunter but for the Carlisle side to say yeah you know maybe that is something good to do so I'm glad to see it's happening because I think it'll help the eighth grade parents a lot with the transition. And I'll just say, and I'm going a little sideways, but when my kids were in eighth grade, there was much more intimate sessions with the high school at each, now it's not, would be one, but each at Peabody and, and Sanborn. And I found those much less overwhelming than the going to the high school. Because mm -hmm. I thought that yeah. people much better, much, uh, more free to ask questions of the faculty members. Yeah, it's a scale. So, it's a scale thing, you know. Clearly. So it just it's just something to think right. about. Um, maybe observe how the the eighth grade goes at CCHS and see it. Well, there's two different avenues. I mean, I, from the thing I'm articulating is more parental. Yeah, I'm talking about yeah. the eighth grade parents now yeah. go to CCHS. The it kids love it actually. Every I have to say, right. I talk to. I know a lot of ninth grade parents, and I ask them how their kids are doing, and everybody has the same thing to say. They love it. And they love it because it's a great school, but they love it because it's a freedom. I mean, these kids have been in eight, in my daughter's case, ten and a half years in one building. Yes. She's ready, like, thank you, but I'm going to another town. So I don't really have an issue with the kids. I really don't. I think it's the parents. No, 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 I'm talking about the, pa the yeah, parents. Yeah, so I'm going to make that clear. Because, yeah. And, uh, sorry. No, I was going to say, with the ninth grade academy and the changes that are being made, yeah. most of the time was talking about the science curriculum. And the rest of it was a little bit about the math and very little other questions. Well, yeah, I mean, given that there was, there's that change, I mean, that's another good reason, I, you know, secondary reason, but it's a good reason. Anyway. Anyway, it's just good to come and visit. Yeah. I'm really happy to hear that Rivers is coming. You know, I think that's great. And uh, so, again, yeah. you know, Eva, do you have anything? Yeah, it's good. With the transition, especially for new families that they are sending their kids to yeah. high school, there's just an overwhelming amount of information mm -hmm. that right. just keeps coming in. Yeah. Um, so having more opportunities to ask questions, right. it will be very helpful. I, I've offered different. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I've offered some offline suggestions to Dr. Hunter on sped transitions. I, mm -hmm. I think there's still work to be done there, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's been on. Need to debate it here. I think mm -hmm. got the message, and I'm sure it'll be worked on knowing Dr. Hunter. <laughs> yep, and and of course we do need to remember these are our goal. We can't turn our goals, put something on here yep. that we list as our goals. That's really something that we're expecting Dr. Hunter to actually do. <laughs> so I just want to make sure <laughs> that we are focusing on things that are actually our goals, not adding things. To her plate above and beyond yeah, but, but the goals that we've I given her. I just wanted to say that I think that we, when we look here, at, if I remember the original discussion, yearly responsibilities improve communication coordination with Scala means us as school committee. Exactly, that's what I'm pointing out. To their fin in terms of how are we doing? We're not, we're not speaking about the other thing. It's what we do in order to. Uh, you know, I disagree. I have to say. I think, first of all, we don't implement much. We're a board. We direct. So no, no, but that's what putting that's a focus. The original conversation. Okay, but you know, putting putting a focus on something that uh, is implemented by the administration to me is fine, and I'm happy to see it's happening. No, no, no problem. Okay, so I I'd, I'd say on all these, we're moving right along and doing our job here, which is good. So. We can, we can keep going on that. Um, so sorry, I didn't mean to skip over that. No, no, no. Now jumping to 19, to, to what, 2019, 2020 goals. Um, I think what I'm saying is I think on the Concord side, 
I would say at least I think we're doing a pretty good job of supporting the building project. Can you just um, back up one more time? Oh, yes. About the superintendent review. So it's a different review process, right, with this new rubric? When are you going to begin to socialize that amongst mm -hmm. us who've never done any type of review? So I guess it's not new for me. It's, I mean, I've observed it a little bit in the past years, but that's true. What's the time um, for this? Process. We haven't set an exact time. We're actually doing some planning in the next okay. couple of weeks in terms of what fits into where. I would say it'll, it'll it's not this month. Um, it will come in advance enough of when we do this, which right, uh, the evaluation needs to be presented in June. Know. So we will plan some lead time so that we will socialize it first. Gets wasn't exactly. There, wasn't there so we might start that discussion in April. Okay. Start to make sure everybody understands it. That big town that's late, late. Really. Exactly. So Desi, Desi's released quite a bit of rev resources because we signed on for the pilot of right. the new rubric. So we've got tools to look at too, and not just a discussion among ourselves. Right. Yeah. So and so those are publicly this. available, or is that something that's? I'll forward you the email we okay. got. So there's no because I, if I remember last year there was a mid-year review. So the new mm -hmm. so what? a mid-year review. Maybe it's a goal. There wasn't a review. It was a goal update, which is what we did tonight. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it looked a little different just because it was in a different format. Um, I was but it was similar to what, we've, okay. what we're doing right now. I was just, it was more not challenging the. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, just wondering. Yeah, yeah usually yes. it does. I mean, it, it is one of the last things that gets completed um, for this fiscal year, which is, you know, it's sort of an oddity okay. that the transition takes place after town meeting rather than at the end of the fiscal year, yeah, because just, especially yeah. because of that in particular mm -hmm. is one of the things that uh, that and then in years where there's some challenging year end financial mm -hmm. issues, mm -hmm. um, you know, you've got a committee that wasn't in place for most of right. the activity that took place. Yep. Um, so. so we do process wise though, as if somebody is completing their term, they participate in the review, not, let's yeah, say, yeah. whoever selected to fill it. Understood. Because obviously they were here. Yeah. And typically, uh, you know, I mean, what we have done in the past is, Joanna did this for two or three years in a row, but mm -hmm. um, last year, Heather and I collated the input mm -hmm. because you have to come up with a uniform mm -hmm. assessment. Mm -hmm. um, so and everybody does theirs individually. Um, meet with Dr. Hunter yep. um, individually, mm -hmm. and then uh, once we've had those that input, you'll select somebody. Um, I would recommend a pair. I think it's easier than one person trying to do it. It's a big um, project. And uh, okay, and pull that all together. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. So that's yet to now come. Now With a good no, but with a good reminder that it is still a big project left to come. That's. Mm -hmm. It's not checked off by any means. Um, can you take a step back? <laughs> <laughs> you can, you've all. I'm going to keep going forward now. <laughs> um, so 2019 and 20 goals. I think we've checked or we've okay, addressed the MS. Um, complete CTA and CCTA bargaining. Obviously, we've this been. This is done and you complete. Complete, right. Um, that's still a big project on our plate, mm -hmm. both of them, obviously. And very so, much underway. And very much underway, absolutely. Good progress moving along. Um, I think we're comfortable with where we are. Still a big time commitment going forward. Um, the superintendent contract, obviously we have some time scheduled mm -hmm. to talk about process. That's something that we still have to complete by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. um, now, policy subcommittee process review, this was something I wasn't quite so sure as I looked at it yesterday over the past couple of days um, where this stands. My understanding is that you guys in the policy committee have kind of looked at the process and adjusted as necessary. And does that mean that a process review is complete? Well, to continue that conversation, I, I think the larger committee is giving us implied endorsement of the current process, which is to uh, work our review systematically and insert where we believe it's wise one either out of order move it up in the queue for review or bring something new to the table we've done both and it seems to be uh, 
acceptable to the committee and uh, we've been working with Laurie in the room on, on all of these as well, as well as with uh, uh, Dorothy, the right. association. So it seems to me we have implied process. An implied process that includes judgment of the committee. Yeah. Would, um, would others agree, Lori? I think comfortable so. with the process? Yeah. I, um, I mean, none so of us are comfortable with the pace. Policy is slow work. It is uh, slow work, yeah. and yeah. I think we're appropriately using time based on things that can move right along and slowing down where we need to. Okay. It's like work at Logan Airport. There's always something under construction. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and just to reference that to a point that David made last time and may come up later, if we, I think it was regarding putting some of us on a working group, if we decide that some other things are high priority temporarily, I would think it's within the description that you just gave us, Court, that the policy subcommittee could say, well, the, the full committee has a, another big priority for the three months. We're going to put things on hold for a couple of months if necessary. These are uh, very okay. easily uh, put to a priority system okay. so mm -hmm. that we can do that. So yeah. that, that is kind of inherent in the process that you've described. Great. I, I would say then that we kind of check off that one for now. Mm -hmm. um, areas of awareness, we all knew this. these were just lenses by which we would look at things throughout the year. They're more reminders. I don't think there's anything on here that we need to check off. Um, and in fact, the more we work with this list this year, I would say we're going to format it differently next year so it doesn't look like such a long list when these items aren't actually items, um, but ways of looking at things. And sustainability has become a lens for us. And I think just de facto. Yeah, it has. That's it's, true. It's a constant. Yeah. Um, Especially in... I didn't want to be adding things to our list, Court. <laughs> no, we already did add it. I know. In the Concord Public Schools, it, it, it should... It, I think we all assumed, because of this, the town making a commitment at town meeting, in, in a number of ways, that you know sustainability should always be at lens. Mm -hmm. you know, we could argue that hmm. that definitely applies to the region as well, but... Yep. Yeah. I think that's. It's been heightened a bit this year by the building project. Exactly. And mm -hmm. the aspects. So, yeah. That's what I'm suggesting. It's Sorry. there already, yeah. whether we. Competing and complementary actions there. Yeah. yeah. It's True. A good thing. And then the bus stuff in yeah. the parking lot. Yes, exactly. Um, so, updates that we desired. This is the one where looking through it, um, I was kind of not questioning some, but questioning what it is that we're all really looking for here. We've been doing a lot. We've spent a lot of time on other things so far this year that are not necessarily on this list. Mm -hmm. um, and we have this list of updates desired and I don't think realistically we can ask the administration to do six big presentation updates to us in the next three months. That's not realistic at all. Um, some of them we hear about a lot anyway. Mm -hmm. Some of them maybe we decide we don't need a presentation this month. So I just want to kind of go through and get people's thoughts on this and honestly see where we can pare it down and check things off because I think we need to be realistic about the next few months. Um, so from a Concord perspective, sorry guys, I'm just jumping around because there are only a couple of Concord things here. Mm -hmm. um, but from a Concord perspective, um, Spanish is something that we've, we've heard a little bit about. Is there a, a real desire, I'm not sure if I should go one by one or have people jump Go in one here. by one. Um, <laughs> Do it quickly. It, then can. is there a strong desire or need to hear about the details of Spanish this year? I think it's curriculum. I don't see why it actually... It's nice to hear if the administration wants to bring it, but it's curriculum and it's but not our... It's not. not our Only if the program's going to change. What year are we in in the, in the Spanish program? Three. So is there anything unique about year three that is worthy of brief brief attention and reporting to the committee and the public? In Spanish, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I think we've re-looked at some of the curriculum. We're revamping curriculum. They're building curriculum as they go because it's in year three. So, for you know, but it, it's still a growing program right. because the kids have the kids are all still aging. Yeah. Um, so it's still a work in progress getting better and better all the time. Kristen's brought in other resources um, to support the teachers as they develop it. We're, it's um, not an elective, it's to everyone. 
For everyone. It's yeah. For if it's everyone. special. If it's yeah. developing, I, I would argue for yeah. a brief report. Uh, in the, in the uh, way of extra work, I hope not. Uh, in the way of hearing from somebody, even in writing, who's already hugely familiar with it, I think it'd be useful if it's something that's... I mean, Kristen's going to want a night to come and update you on her committees and outcomes and all of that, so we can give her... Mm -hmm. ask her to do what's working, a what's being a couple tested... A of highlights uh, of spinach with yeah. that. Okay. Yeah. Is that realistic? If, we're, if it's highlights, yeah. Highlights, okay. yeah. Yeah. I would yeah. I would say that. I think we're going to be asking for a lot from administration and so if we can keep that we'll we'll incorporate some high high level highlights into her would be great. Um back to the region. Q5 um you know, there's a lot of discussion about various I mean the the work obviously right. that the administration's been doing on curricular things is amazing. Um is this something that anybody's really it's, attached it's, to a it's, detailed report on? It's getting a lot of attention by school committee in the form of uh, negotiations. It's part of what mm -hmm. happens at the high school and everything at the high school is discussed. Um, and uh, we have a ad hoc working group looking at trips with Lori and others and uh, Q5 is trips related. So I think it's getting lots of attention. Getting covered. Okay, no. so we can say... Do you think it's getting covered or you want to bring it up to committee? I, uh, well, it, w it will ultimately. It will ultimately uh, uh, show up when uh, uh, we have something to say about trips, uh, for example. You have an MLA to incorporate into the contract, right. so ultimately as a committee you're going to have to talk about yeah. it. Okay, okay. so, so then, then I would say it's not necessarily... We're not asking for a, a specific presentation or update not about it. It's something that we'll be learning about and talking about. Um, so I would suggest that we kind of cross it off of updates desired because we're not actually actually asking for a big presentation on it. Is that fair? Exactly. It's happening in, happening okay. in another form. Happening in another form. Happening in another happening. form. Happening. Or we can, that can be our update. It's happening in its own form. Um, special education, I, I would say we hear a lot about it. <laughs> it's an important discussion that should continue. Um, but coming, uh, coming from... Uh, coming from uh, uh, CPAC, um, they would welcome more information included in our presentation about um, special uh, education. So, so more anytime, information in anytime. other presentations related to that? Uh, but yes, and um, since uh, special education is going through so many changes, uh, the group of parents would like to have enough information coming as the changes are happening at the at the schools so uh, i would suggest that there's there should be more in, information rather than less focus on okay the question, so, so, the, question is, so, the place to do it is doing right this way. i'm not sure that that's necessarily a presentation to the school committee as just regular outbound communication to parents like right. The, like the a session that like you're doing a, a session weeks, in Carlisle. You know, it was a really we were invited and some of us came, mm. but the question is whether because a large presentation of CPAC will take a full a full evening of school. Yeah, it would I, I would go to the format <coughs> that you did before, inviting yeah. them and, yeah. and inviting us to attend. Yeah, yeah. I mean I think we well, get pretty regular updates here about yeah, what we're doing. I agree. Uh, certainly satisfactory to me, um, and to make well, sure. including information about what is getting done uh, that addresses special education uh, students in any presentation that, that you know comes up mm. to us, like the RTI or STEAM or whatever we are covering. Parents want to hear, you know, what Highlight is that highlights? Highlights, yeah. So uh, there is a there, you know, this, those students are not are in focus as well, just yeah. as, as the other students. Yeah, yeah I, I, I support Eva. I think, um, you know, we're both sped parents, so we have a bias here, no doubt. But a new person, I don't know what his title is, Jared under... Um, team chair. Team chair, and that's all he does, right? He's not a teacher. Mm -hmm. So that's a change. He's been in place for, I don't know, half a few months. Um, a lot of resources are spent on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not sure always effective from my personal view, and I think we should elevate it to yeah. the level of school committee and have 
at some point this spring, an update by him and his team about what's going on. The problem with this is that, honestly, I don't get me wrong, I, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. It is too wide. You know, we have to actually, maybe you that are more involved have to focus it a little more. Because the presentation of everything is just far too wide. I'm saying everything. No, no, no. You know, every change in the, I, I'm, I, I suggest actually that you that know about it more will come with more maybe specific things that sh that should be brought because otherwise it would be at least it would be just far too wide to be able to actually touch I mean, I'm, I'm so I'm happy well, if, if there's a couple it's funny I was about to say I support Eva also but my comment was leading to a different outcome um, I feel like what you're asking for is more mention of special ed connections and ramifications in whatever we're talking about. So it's a lens. So that it's a lens in a way, exactly. Right. So it sort of goes back to our and, discussion about the middle school. Right, if we're talking about the middle school or STEAM or whatever, whatever it may be, that, that we're highlighting how does this affect special education students in the program. Um, and I think that's something that we could kind of, you know, be aware of and I'll be more aware of, and I think it's a mm -hmm. good suggestion. Um, I don't think that necessarily leads to a big presentation here because I think we're hearing regularly about things that are going on in special education. Well, uh, that we should be doing as we go along, that lands on special education as we are getting um, those presentations that those students should be included. But we, to, you know, to, to, that, to the point of, uh, that David made, um, there are so many changes and um, we are the connection to parents. Our presentations are the connection to the community, to the wider community, to understand what gets done um, at the school level. So having one presentation from the new director uh, on what have we done, where, where is this uh, special education heading, that would be welcome uh, to, to those parents. Um, so maybe having one of those uh, Okay. So, Lori, is, that, Lori, is that something that was, sorry, is that something that was in the works or planned anyway to have Ruth Gruby come back to us later in the year? I've talk, or no? been waiting for feedback on, feedback on this. On what I, I, think talk, I, okay. I think that there is enough, apparently, interest, in, and it's a, it's, a, it's a sensitive subject. I don't think we should actually, I think that if I would be able to suggest something such a presentation should come by route and do a kind of a very, uh, as you say, how do you call it? Uh, high, high level. level. High level, and open and open it to more questions. Say. And then you can actually direct those that know more can direct the conversation to the so, future. So basically, having asking her to come and give us kind of an update on what's happened this year. And, and to be able to actually present her to a, to the committee to be able to ask a couple of questions and see. Actually, I was going with your first suggestion. I, you know, I hate to volunteer more time, but I, mean, I would be I would be okay with kind of working with Ruth and um, Jared, the other Jared, to hear what they have to say and filter it to help them distill it. Because I do agree that just a survey course of what's going on is not. No, I, I think that you're right. If you, if, but that's it, because the people that are more in the know can actually direct this conversation to a much more useful. I, I, mean, I want to hear from Eva on this because you're actually more involved than I am on CPAC. I, I think CPAC can direct uh, uh, can direct this conversation. What parents would would like to hear at the end of this school year, um, towards this end of the school year, what has been done, what changes have been. Um, so maybe we should. Maybe we should be meeting with CPAC and get that feedback, or you can then, then filter that back. I don't know. I, I don't know if so mechanics are proceeding, but I think. Just to review, and I want to, because I'm not sure what's in the works already. You've done a couple of forums so far <coughs> with CPAC, right? And are there others in the works already? Uh, there's the one coming up next week, which is middle right. school building yeah. focus. I mean, we're happy to go to CPAC at any point and make that an ongoing. Right. dialogue and open that up for parents to come and listen and learn more. I think um, 
we had the big one here and from that we followed up and had a very middle school specific one which allowed for a deeper level of interaction about middle school based questions now we're having a middle school building based one maybe i'm hearing we need to have a high school based one and um address some of the questions coming out of the high school which would have a presentation component and a question and answer component my only worry about doing it here is we, we're so pressed for time because our agendas get big we might be able to go deeper mm -hmm. at a at a another for Better. another setting i think that could make sense because if we ask someone here we're asking them to do a 10-minute presentation uh, and we have we six other things theory. right another night and only we can ask questions so does it get to your goals more, right, that's uh, to your objectives more, to do more of a so, forum style again? So the only reason, uh, well, um, our meetings here are televised. Mm -hmm. Those meetings are actually posted and uh, posted to, uh, and the link is sent out to the CPAC members. So um, the, I, I think accessibility of, of the information um, is wider if we are able to. But it'll be much more basic information because you cannot actually, you know, I've been here in the, you remember, I've been here in right. the meeting of Pasiba and it was extremely well attended. There are many, many parents in the room. And I really, for me, it was, I, I'm not involved in CPAC and each one had another view and another question. There's so many things. You know, you give it two hours, there'll be two hours of questions. You give four, there'll be four. I don't see a, a way to actually bring a presentation like we do acknowledgement or something and give a 10 minutes kind of that will cover. It will be, it actually would be even maybe disrespectful to the subject because there's so many little things in the subject. It just, you can televise a, a session if you do it. Mm -hmm. A CPAC session with the president, sure. you can televise, can televise it. it. You know, but I, 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 all I'm saying it will be too wishy washy. Sorry, yeah, but it will be too much. So I don't think we need to, we were just trying to catch up on our goals. Yeah. So I know CPAC is meeting this Thursday, and I know they've set their agenda, but perhaps they can have an emergency additional item. And after hearing our conversation here, and maybe give us a little guidance on could it be a multi pronged approach or, sure. you know, because it sounds like we're just. Okay. All having good so ideas, let's, but. Right, but we're going to keep it on our list mm -hmm. of updates desired. It's not necessary. We, we're not going to define what that looks like, but we're going to continue to keep special education at the top of the list of desired commu regular communication. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's sit on us. Um, we can actually even do a little more and move it up to areas of awareness and lens, because we actually are doing it, which means every decision we take, both in budgetary and everything, we check the influence on special education. That's true. Maybe, maybe we well, move it. I mean, you, you have, Jared comes to every meeting and Jared gives an update at that level, but Ruth sometimes comes, sometimes doesn't, never gives an update. Mike doesn't come, doesn't give an update. I mean, what is the level at which you have staff updates for us? I'm following what was happening when I arrived, which was they only came for very particular agenda items and the business manager came to every meeting, mm -hmm. so. And I like Jared, but why him and not the other ones? <laughs> when you say Jared comes to every meeting, what meeting is <laughs> this meeting, meeting. Meetings. That's very Jared. standard that that's, your yeah, business that's manager would sit with the school committee at every meeting. Our business manager. Yeah. Direct reports. I think that's a different discussion. But it's going to be in all districts. I'm happy I'm to have them here why. when there's an yeah. agenda item. Well, yeah. I mean, it could or be, I mean, request I mean this is maybe a next year thing, but maybe spent should be up to every meeting. I don't know. I think we should talk about uh, it. Yeah. Right. That's a big conversation. That's, that's a, yeah. I think we get, I, I feel like we get regular updates, both in your superintendent's update and then discussions when there needs to be around specific things. Um, you know, at, at some point, uh, I think if the if the need is to get information to parents, I don't think this is the right form, because even though we're televised, I don't think there are a lot of special ed parents or any parents for that matter who are sitting on the edge of their chair watching what we're doing here. Um, we're here to do the business of a few, the school. <laughs> but not a lot. Um, well, yeah. I I I, I couldn't disagree, and I'm just yeah. going to say the following. I'm, 
we go through an awful lot of minutiae here yeah. in great detail. So to parse it and say, well, this is important and that's important, I'm okay with it, but I think it's an artificial lens. I mean, there's much more detailed stuff in this meeting than, say, we do at Carlisle. Mm -hmm. And that's okay, that's your style. But if you're going to do detail, then we ought to examine what areas of detail. Yeah, Again, maybe not for this year, but you guys are accustomed to much more detailed information that comes out every meeting with lots of meetings. So to say, well, it's bedtime or is it, you know, I don't know. I mean, hearing from the principal, that might not be bad. You know, I just think we ought to it's a good take comment. a broader yeah. look at that. Okay, thank you. And just to be clear, nobody has said Spence not important. <laughs> that's, that's not up for debate. Right. Um, so, okay. Is uh, RTI sort of a sub Yeah, I think that's kind of a sub, yeah. I mean, I'm not a professional, I'm just asking. Is oh, it's not under special education. Well, we heard about it tonight. But we've heard about that, it, for example. Yeah, yeah, tonight. Yeah. I would say we check it off. We've heard about it several times. It's, it yeah, really, no, just, we hear about it yeah. within, exactly. And you'll get updates on all the school improvement plans. And all the school improvement plans. Okay. So I would say that's happening. Um, STEAM, I think we've There was a presentation. Heard. Some of us actually attended the day here. Right. I, I'm, I'm happy at this year. I mean, it will be in development in a year or two. Yep. But, Great, done. Checked Person. off the list. That's uh, nice. I, it and makes sense to me. Spent a couple of hours here, held, you know, and it was open to all of us. Yeah, that's perfect. I was heartened to hear tonight when in their presentation, I'm going to civics education, how that was a component of mm -hmm. there. I was just, I was, I was really pleased. That was great. Um, and if you know, Chris has come to us and she has a couple of slides. That's fine. I'm confident that the teachers. Uh, I have to trust that they feel like this is an important responsibility through all of their curriculum to focus on uh, public policy, uh, participation, mm -hmm. um, voting, etc. So it's either they're excited about it or they're not. And I don't think you can, you know, a presentation is going to make that uh, change dramatically. So um, I think it's very important, but I don't need a update of the presentation. Uh, okay. I never understood what does an update design we try to put it in areas of <laughs> yes. well, I, well, I think, I think I, we, I were, succeed. <laughs> we were responding to a trend toward uh, lesser attention to it yes. and saying right. let's let's put, hear about it a little bit. Let's I think see it on our list, let's pay attention to it in one way or another because we expect that others throughout the district are going to do the same. And we're happy yeah. to civics be this year at Lincoln Right. Library. So there's probably, okay, so we're, we're not actually asking for a report. We're working on the census right now. Yes, the census as well. well. Yes, thank you. So Anna, that's a huge Different one. connection. Yes, mm -hmm. great. great. Okay, terrific. Um, then there's some housekeeping. Some of it became bigger than what seemed like housekeeping. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> the regional agreement, I meant to touch base with you on this. Where are we with that? Yeah, I think we got to put that aside for now. I think yeah. we agreed at most we would put it all into one document, which we've done. Right, right? and that's done. So, yeah, it's in a. Right. It's not in those typed pages from 1970, whatever. Okay. It's now yeah. a right. document. That's, so. That was the only that change. Was that was what we agreed to do. So there we go. I we updated it. Thank Check. You know. Check. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for but doing that for us. Update it. Update so we're not update it. touching the Well, update it updated it in terms of technologically. I don't think that's what this meant. But, you know, that's like, well, it's where we landed. But we did, it's where we landed. We, started. we did have a group discussion I'm, and decided that was all we wanted to do. So. We actually, yeah, we actually did have a discussion about it. Yes, yeah. we did. We moved it. It's something that we did. So if we can. Just for clarity, we concluded that we could make changes, but didn't have to. Right. Thank you. Right. Okay, let's pass okay through so this. to keep moving, um, we said that we would support administrative onboarding process. I don't know that we've done much to help you in that. Is there anything else that we can don't do to help you means. in this process? Stay yeah. out of the way. Okay. <laughs> Stay out of the way. Should we put that on our list? <laughs> Stay out of her way. Well, Dr. Hunter said it. That's the key to her Say anything. Establish You can encourage the people and you stay out of the way. Okay. <laughs> Let me try to get through the housekeeping so we can be done with this. Yes. Yuval, can we focus, please? So I am Thank actually. Thank you. Um, we have established plan for a facilities use fees review. Is that? So, I'm very, very interested in doing that. I, you told me that you're going to map out the rest of the meetings for right. the year. So I'd like you to fit, fit that in somehow or another. Try it to would fit be that a couple in. of sessions. A couple of sessions, as in 
review a couple it, of meetings. A couple of review it in a couple of meetings. I'm willing to do the work. The work's Just done. Okay. okay. Well, I'd like to see the work because I have. Yeah. No, we haven't gotten to it. I, okay. I will share a little concern about the load of stuff we're going to have from February but this is, until June, right? These haven't been changed over 10, 11, years. 11 years now. I know. Right. And we've got a whole new facility. It's. I think it's a dereliction of our duty in terms of potential revenue. Um, from private parties, or at least to examine it. To examine, okay. So let's, can I suggest, I, I have so I've heard from Cynthia now, I haven't heard from anybody else on this. I, I can, consider this uh, very doable. Um, right. And I think we can help out. Uh, we don't have that many uh, data sources to go to. We have a handful of other like districts. We have our own costs to look at. We have uh, already known what uh, is, open for uh, community use uh, on a fee-based way. Mm -hmm. So we're updating what exists. We're um, constrained by, we, member, by agreements in terms of charging certain parties. <laughs> we adopted a two-fee a two, a two fee structure in about 1987. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just updated it every two years since then, more or less. Um, so I think we can, we can just check, I have, I have a procedure check that table and see if the, and this is just for the region. See if the administration yeah. wants to make changes based on move. keeping up with current costs. That's region only. Yes. Can I ask, why is it at all a school committee question and not business matter? You set the rates. We it's set the rates? Yeah. Okay. All right. Because it's fine. That's an answer. <laughs> that's, that's every district does that. That's and, can okay. you, and can you, like this, Give us a bulk figure of what are we talking about? No, no, well, no? that's another no. night. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, well, so so we will keep it on the list of yeah. how much it's all let's discussion. Try to how much all discussion. Okay, let's can we, can we have we, the meeting tonight. Yes. So right. just move okay. On. So finished your approvals for FY 2020 trips. Nice. We're done. We're going to check that off. And the last one is review the trip approval process, which that, I know is in the works. I had a very productive I, meeting today, uh, and the encouraging news, uh, I think, is that uh, uh, Lori uh, is prepared to, uh, and I think eager to, uh, bring a process to us uh, whereby uh, initial approval and final approval are quite similar in nature uh, for any recurring trips. Uh, and secondly, that uh, uh, we build into the process uh, almost unequivocally, uh, final approval is necessary before monies are collected so that uh, we don't pre-obligate parties to take action that uh, they're not ready to take. Uh, thirdly, that uh, uh, we've got a fair level of confidence that by the last meeting in June, the known trips, which would be most of them for the following school year, would come our way. Recurring trips for uh, initial final and uh, new trips for initial final to uh, follow shortly thereafter. Does that capture it, do you think, Lori? I think so. I think that's the summary of what so we're starting to go towards. Okay. okay so it's in process thank you and it certainly stays on our list because really we need to finish it um so i will just quickly wrap this up to say i think this is good i think we've narrowed it down a little bit some of it we've completed which is great um what that leaves us with in terms of big things to focus on really is obviously continuing to support the budget through town meeting um whatever that is completing mm -hmm. our superintendent evaluation continuing to uh, communicate with the community, supporting the building project, completing our bargaining, renewing our superintendent contract, um, and uh, creating, reviewing the use fees, and finalizing the trip approval process. So we don't need so many meetings. As items to check off. That's, That's going to be your list. There's that, and there's a lot have that, to do this spring. Time. Right, and there are a lot of other things that yeah. come up. That, that just have to happen every year. So that's a lot to, to do in the next few months. Um, so I, I would suggest what it, this, why don't we do this? Um, each of the chairs is gonna be meeting with Lori soon. We have meetings set up to just kind of plan out the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So why don't we take these that we've discussed, start to put them into time slots in the meetings in the rest of the years and come back with suggestions. Okay. 
Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Um, Transportation Working Group. Um, the, I don't I haven't heard from anybody that they want to be involved in this. Um, I did take the presentation from last year's uh, Article 16, which was the ring road and the parking lot. I've made adjustments to focus just on the parking lot. Um, I just got it to these guys mm -hmm. today for some review, um, given that we aren't going to meet again um, for a while. Why don't, after you guys are taking a look at it, we'll send it around. If you've got any comments, please contact mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I think what we can, you know, this can be something we can use if we have a group we want to talk to. Um, at that next February meeting, we should chart out some uh, opportunities to just get out and have a couple of budget conversations and mm -hmm. and uh, article conversations about this particular thing mm -hmm. uh, in the month of March. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. so we've got time, but yeah. um, but in the interim between now and the 24th or whatever the next meeting is, um, once we've got a presentation and everybody's given me any input they want to give, you can use it to... Okay. Between Thank now you. and then. Thank you for doing that. Sure. Um, so can we move so, on from that? So, so does that mean we don't need a working group because you've just done it I for us? I, don't. I just want to remind that the agreement here in this group was that we would try and come to town meeting with a twist, with something new. And we just approve them for electric buses. That's good enough. It's pretty new. That's fine. I think we can discuss um, it the next meeting. We have to look yeah, at Yeah, I think, meeting. you know, I mean, there's a lot going on right now. There's a, there's a town committee being created on transportation. I think, I think just we've reached out to mothers out front. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is, you know, in a good space from where it was mm -hmm. a month ago. Um, I think right now probably best for us to just let some of this unfold oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and see i know that we will be invited to be to have uh superintendent or a designee a designee to be a school committee member uh to participate in the transportation mm -hmm. the town transportation committee um i think as brian pointed out uh it would behoove us from a budgetary standpoint to to be involved in the town-wide push for this Mm -hmm. uh, rather than, you know, get too far out over our skis yeah. uh, on our own. No, um, I totally agree. So, so, so that's good. So, so when we speak about when the chairs are actually putting things on the agenda, I want to remind everybody that the agreement in the meeting before last was that this warrant article will come back mm -hmm. to see whether we continue with it or mm -hmm. not continue with yep. it. Yeah. So, it, so please put it time enough that we so we can pull it. To, yeah. Minutes before town meeting is the one. Yeah, but we don't want to do all the work and put it ten minutes. You're saying correct. plan for a follow-up mm -hmm. discussion there, at there some point. Like clear understanding yes. that we have to be convinced that we come to town meeting with more than we had last time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let's move on to action items. Um, mm -hmm. The this is for both. Uh, districts and uh, just going to have a motion for both that the Concord and Concord Carlisle School Committees vote to approve the following staff request to enroll their children in Concord Public Schools, Concord Carlisle Regional School District, beginning in August 2020. And tuition be waived. Those students are Meg Jensen, nurse at CMS, two sons to enroll in sixth and eighth grade, Sarah Kieselback, teacher at CCHS, daughter to enroll in ninth grade. Uh, Morgan Lonegren, teacher at CCHS, um, I'm sorry, Michael Lonegren, teacher at CCHS, son to enroll in ninth grade. Lauren LaRusso, teacher at Alcott, son to enroll in kindergarten. And Kristen Saunders, teacher at Willard, daughter to enroll in ninth grade. So moved. So, for both? For both. Yes. Second? Second for both. Thank you. Any discussion? Glad we're able to do this. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, so, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> and I'll, we'll, we'll do the vote separately. All in favor for Concord? Aye. 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 All in favor for the region? Aye. 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 Any opposed on either? Okay. Um, Thank you. 
next <coughs> item is to approve the 2021 calendar. And do we, uh, do we have a motion for this? I uh, would. Are we ready? 2020 right. calendar. Uh, I don't we see that. Uh, we, uh, yes. so we've got all our ducks in a row. We, we do. Okay. I know. Good job. Yes. Let me give it a go along. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. Go ahead. The Concord uh, Public Schools and the Concord Carlisle uh, High School calendar for the year 2020 2021 be uh, approved as submitted this evening. Second for both. Oh, so, no, go ahead. Any exactly. discussion on this? Yeah, I want to bring a few things that have uh, changed since we brought you the draft. Um, and since I, I want to be thorough, so bear with me for a moment. The professional days will be the 27th and 28th. The kids will be back on the 31st. We are still in discussion um, with the kindergarten staff as to whether they will start that same timeline. They mm -hmm. have concerns just over the readiness for a four day, three and a half day week off the bat rather than a shorter week. So that's one piece that hasn't been totally set, but we thought we're, we're close enough on everything else to bring you the rest of it. Um, we re-looked at the high school conference day and have elected to go with the November 5th piece with a tentative plan that when we set the early release dates that are not on here yet, those four high school dates, one will go before the November 1st college deadline ah, right. and build a half day in for the high the seniors to work on things which is some of what the debate was about mm -hmm. whether we go the last week in october or the first week in november um the middle school conference day inadvertently got put in november and should have been in december all along so we've now moved that to december 3rd the rest i think is as you saw it last time um as mentioned half day before the break in December, so 23rd would be a half day. Mm -hmm. Second conference day for the elementary schools in April, and I think the rest is as you saw. So it was more those, challenging than it seemed. So mm -hmm. those caveats uh, oh, fit nicely into the as submitted, I think. Yes, they but do. <laughs> I'm glad you voiced them all. Okay. Yes. Good. Just a question. Oh, okay. Sorry, a question on the kindergarten discussion. If they or you, if the decision is that kindergarten should start later, that does not, it, they are not tied into 180 days, correct? So they could start a day or two later and it doesn't affect their exactly. So you get quite a bit of space. I just wanted to highlight that so we all know it. we're not going to keep the kindergartners in school two days longer no. than everybody no. else. <laughs> <laughs> no Saturday class. Right, exactly. Uh, any, other, any other questions? Parents probably like that. <laughs> right. um, any other questions? Uh, I just wanted to say that I was uh, the the staff worked really hard. Yeah, it was very thoughtful. Yeah, and they're willing to change their minds mm -hmm. and, and in a, in a thought, again thoughtful way and uh, good discussions. You know, because it's a complicated thing, a lot of moving yeah. blocks with the region and middle school and high school. So um, it was uh, you know was a very interesting discussion. Yeah, yeah, we. We were thorough. Yeah. It took a while to make sure we hadn't yep. missed anything, but that is because they were thorough. Because so every year, that little shift at the beginning, mm -hmm. and, and they try things one way one year, and they try things one way another year, and it's interesting. Right. It's so. a different discussion every yeah. year. Where, where is Carlisle? I shared, Jim, Jim and I have exchanged this, so I know they've had it. I think you were looking at starting we're the second of September. So yeah, we're starting later couple for some days. reason. I'm not sure why, but. Because this is an unusual start, <laughs> probably why. Yeah, it's a late Labor Day. Well, they have a, yeah, well, that's the main reason. Yes, yeah, the late Labor Day. Yeah. Anyway, good. So, Thank you. Uh, all in favor for the region? Aye. 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 And all in favor for Concord? Aye. 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 And Any opposed? Okay. And thanks from the committees yeah, to is. the mm -hmm. team that worked on this. Uh, okay. Last up, but two of them, just so the Carlisle folks know, in our Concord portion, we had a vote to finance for bus financing, and we moved it um, up mm -hmm. to do here as well, since it's all part of the same discussion. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to repeat discussion. So just so you know, we'll be voting both, not just the uh, region right now. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, 
I mean, do you have, have, a closing closing you have anything you want to? Uh, nope. We had a bid last week. TV uh, equipment uh, financing was the lowest submitted bid. Uh, interest rate 2.52 over five years. Mm -hmm. um, pretty aggressive. Pretty good. But if we're going for the three we're buying or financing through a lease. Correct. And what about we're the two that you? We're going to need to hear. They need to do a little, another time. To do a little more work. Okay. Hopefully by the next oh, regional meeting. Again. What? The electric. Oh, the electric. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's a Hopefully by the oh, next separate. regional meeting. We'll separate. Yes. Okay. All right. Do something on that. So uh, can I have a motion that the Concord Carlisle School Committee votes to award the contract for the financing of the fiscal year 2020 purchase of three school buses the low better TD Equipment Financing Inc. with a rate of 2.52 for five years. So moved. Seconded. All uh, discussion. All in favor for the region. Aye. 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 Um, and we will move back to the, I'm oh, sorry, find the right link. The vote for the CPS one, mm -hmm. I would, basically the same discussion, it's two school buses, so I would take a motion that the Concord School Committee no, only three. We have only two. Two. Two for CPS. Mm -hmm. Oh, forgive me. Yeah. Okay, so I take a motion that the Concord School Committee votes to award the contract for the financing of the FY 2020 purchase of two school buses to the low bidder TD Equipment Financing Inc. with a rate of 2.52% for five years. So moved. Seconded. Any further discussion on this one? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Both pass. And take a motion to adjourn. Well, we, have to, we need a oh, motion. We need a motion for both committees to move into executive session that the Concord School Committee and Concord Carlisle Regional School Committee will enter into an executive session under purpose two of the open meeting law to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non union personnel and purpose three of the open meeting law to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body. So move for both. Second for both. Uh, and enough. we need vote by roll call. And we will, and we will not be returning. Oh. And we will not be returning to session, to public session. I have a for region aye. Reading aye for both. Move on aye for both. Booth aye for both. About aye for both. Johnston aye for both. I know aye for region. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you. See you right after.